Welcome back to episode 178 of the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here with Troy. What's going on, Troy? Not a whole lot. Super nice weather. It's hot. Mm-hmm. Or it's hot for us, so now I can play for a week or two as we transition. But we'll yeah. see how it goes. It was, I think it hit like 83 or 85 here yesterday. And this can only happen in Minnesota. I'm in the car with my son. And it's like the first nice day we've had in mm-hmm. a long time. And what? Sure enough, on the windshield inside the car is a mosquito. Yeah, like they'd come it's out like, immediately. You can't have one nice day here without nope. something ruining it. But that's uh, our beautiful state. You had a good weekend. You do anything fun? Um, not a lot of stuff going on. Couple hockey things with my son, and then yesterday I kind of checked out the NCAA. Championship men's game was pretty awesome. The goalie for Denver, Matt Davis, was phenomenal. Shut out, won the won the national title. So Cutter Gautier and who else was on Boston College? Will Smith. Some yeah. of those big guys got shut out by the Denver goalie. And I think if I remember right, Denver might have the most titles ever in NCAA Division One men's hockey. It's either them or North Dakota, I think. I thought I saw 10. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. They... Or was the game exciting? Yeah, it was, was fun to game. watch. I I really question uh, who am I to judge these guys or question them. But Boston College's coaches they had a couple oppor- or had an opportunity when they got a power play. I don't know eight seven minutes left in the game. They didn't pull the goalie down two zip. Man, mm-hmm. you look at analytics and it's starting to say that's when you you have to pull your goalie and get take the two man advantage and try to score. And then I felt they were a little late just pulling their goalie in general. They didn't pull the goalie. I take it, think until three minutes left, maybe down by two, or maybe it was three and a half. But I would have went like five. Yeah. But again, who am I to judge? Has that Denver goalie been drafted? I don't even know. I just saw the guy. I, I was trying to think if it was the guy Bizonet was talking about a while ago. There was like a month ago. Okay. Bizonet was talking about this goalie he saw. He's awesome. Oh. Or maybe it was Whitney. I was playing the chickens. I couldn't remember if it was him or if that Matt Davis or not, but I do not know. I'm going to look him up right now and see if I can find. Well, you him. you had sent the a Twitter video over yeah. by a chat text of just an amazing save that he made, and you were kind of going crazy over it. So, like as a goalie guy and a goalie coach, what about that save was so tough? Well, he just he slides to the side, and you can see. I don't know if he if he was trying to go to the post, but he missed the post or didn't know where he was. You see his drive leg. He has to go all the way back because that's where the pass went. And his drive leg, you see him kind of miss or slip a little. Then he take, does like a second take, and he just comes flying across and mm-hmm. gets it. So it's just all the skill and technical stuff to get it back and then to read. I mean, you're kind of guessing where the shot's going to go, but to have your glove in the right spot and hit it, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, a lot of instinct taking over there. So d- one of the vaunted Boston teams – doesn't win the NCAA championship. It's kind of interesting, but we know how that feels. We lost the Quinnipiac last year. Our goal yeah. first. Well, it's funny. Going on? I was going to say, my son's asking, he's like, who, who won the title last year? And it took me like three seconds. And then I got mad because I remembered it was Quinnipiac beating the Gophers. And I was just like, ah, yeah. Well, I was about to say, Troy, there is a ton going on in the hobby. Sometimes you would wonder, it's like, man, how do you do a two hour show like twice a week? So once every three days and then one yeah. one every four days and have stuff to talk about. I was telling you before we started recording that I, I had a hard time deciding what to put in the show. There's just, <laughs> you know, we don't want to do a six hour show, even though yeah, at some point I'm sure we will, but yeah, it, it's just crazy. And, and so uh, what an exciting time to be a fan of hockey and of course, part of the hockey card hobby. So excited to get into it today before we get going though. Just a quick reminder that the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a Patreon podcast. What that means is we rely on the support of listeners like yourself to really keep the show going, help us cover our show expenses, produce more, and we hope better hockey card content, and then fund initiatives even in a small way to grow the hobby. It's very easy to support us. We partner with Patreon. We've got a a $199 support level tier. Starts at $5 a month. In addition to just supporting us, you get access to our Discord and you can chat with us and the amazing community that I was going to say we built, but I don't feel like we can take credit for it. It's just really everybody is kind of... Yeah, it's kind of building uh, off itself. <laughs> building off itself. And and so and just love all the people. 
in there and, and seeing kind of all the contributions that they make. And actually we get a lot of our ideas and content from that, that group too. And so really it's almost like a producer of our show in a way to support us. You can go to our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com, click on the become a patron link. We have links in the show description, whether you're listening to us on a podcast app, you're watching us on YouTube, you go to the Patreon website directly, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com and search for hockey cards gong show. And then there's a link in, our Instagram and TikTok profiles as well. We do have one new out of 199 supporter since our last show, uh, T McDonald. Thank you very, very nice. much for your support. Very grateful. And um, just uh, just want to say thank you. All right, man, you ready for the game plan? I am, but before we go, uh, breaking news, Matt Davis update. He's a junior goaltender. Okay. So I guess he can be a, a senior next year. He's undrafted. Really? But it looks Not for like long. Well, see, here's what happens. I don't understand the whole rules. I'm assuming he can say I'm done and sign with anyone right now if he wants to. Oh, like undrafted free agent. Kind yeah, of thing. if he wants to. I mean, I know he's got another year of college if he wants, and then I think that might, if he stays, that might put him back in the draft. He's like a draft eligible. But if he yeah. just says, "Nope, I'm done. I'm going to the pros," I feel like he can sign with anyone. But I'd have to research that more. I don't know how all that stuff works. I wonder hey, how often the starting goalie of the national champion <laughs> I doubt. Undra- is undrafted. Yeah, you know, that's kind of. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm curious. All right, back to the game plan. Today we we'll be on the show with the almost greatest player to wear number 78. Then it's off to Who's Hot and the Struggle Bus. Next is Hobby News, followed by the second installment of Fun Facts with Troy. I know I'm excited. I might be the only one. I missed one. the first one because I you did it while I was on <laughs> vacation. Gone. So yeah, I, this see, is my, my first you, opportunity. Fun Facts with Troy. We finish the show with new product releases, the Gong Show mailbag, and any personal pickups. Okay, Josh. Previously, we looked at the greatest NHL player that wore the number that matched our episode number. We ran through all the numbers, so now we are looking at the almost greatest NHL player to wear the num- each number from the runners up in the Hockey Writers' Greatest NHL Player to Wear Each Number article. Josh, the almost greatest NHL player to wear number 78 per the nominees in the Hockey Writers' Greatest NHL Player to Wear Each Number article and selected by me is this guy, Pavel Dimitra. Mm. We are definitely familiar with him. He was a wild guy yep. for a couple of years. But there were no other runners up at number 78. As a reminder, the greatest tour number 78 was Mark Pouliot, which I had to do a little more research. Pouliot got it because he had more points wearing number 78 and wore it for oh. four seasons with Edmonton. Demetria, I, I want to say Demetria, but it's, I, I work with a person named Demetria. I think it's Demetria. Mm. Only wore number 78 his first three seasons in Ottawa. So I think that's why they gave Pouliot the edge, but Demetra is a way better player <laughs> overall when you look at their stats and everything. But good we get to look at Pavel Dimitra. Overview left winger from Dubnika, Czechoslovakia. Devin Dubnika? Dub Dubnika? Dubnika? No, know. give it dead Devin Dubnik. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, there. Devin Dubnik. You know why I thought of that? Uh, my brother just texted me like two hours ago. Is he in and Czechoslovakia? Or no? Well, no, Czech, he's in Czechia, Saint Cloud. No. He's in Saint Cloud, Minnesota. Close enough. <laughs> at my nephew Gino's AAA hockey tournament, and then the championship game, playing a team coached by Devin Dubnik. Wow. Because I guess I think Dubnik's son probably plays. Nice. Yeah, a lot of those. Wow. My bro- here's what my brother said. A little uh, Devin Dubnik deep dive here. He said he's massive. Like. Yeah, six he's five, like, six, six, something like that. He's, a big he's like, I don't understand how anyone could have scored on this guy. Like, well, <laughs> when he got here for about the first 45 games, nobody could, and then it didn't go great. Yeah, then it went downhill. But anyways, right. yeah, back to our guy. So Dimitra was the 227th overall selection in the 1993 NHL entry draft by the Ottawa Senators. Dimitra played in 847 regular season NHL games over a 16 season NHL career. Dimitra began his career with three seasons with the Ottawa Senators, then played eight seasons with the St. Louis Blues. This was followed by one season with the LA Kings, then two seasons with our Minnesota Wild. Ended his career with two seasons with the Vancouver Canucks. For his awards and accomplishment, one-time Lady Bing winner in 2000 with St. Louis. Three-time NHL All-Star Game selection. For his career... 304 goals, 464 assists for 768 points. Dimitri made the playoffs in 11 of his 16 NHL seasons, compiling 23 goals, 36 assists for 59 points in 94 NHL playoff games played. 
best season of his NHL career from a point standpoint was his 2002-3 season with St. Louis, where Demetra had 36 goals, 57 assists for 93 points and 78 regular season games played. Demetra was a highly skilled offensive player that was a regular top six forward during his career. He was best known for his time with the St. Louis Blues, where Demetra scored 30 or more goals three times and 70 or more points four times. Demetra was also a regular on the Slovakia national team. Being a 227th overall draft pick, Josh, Demetra is considered one of the biggest draft steals in NHL history. No kidding. Pretty good. If you can get a 16 career out of being the 227th overall selection. I remember being pretty excited when the Wild. Yeah. Came up. Yeah. I mean, it was later in his career, but we, we didn't have many like top. It's a while. They need anyone yeah. that could offensive punch. Do you think that we need to find like a, a school, like night school, maybe, or an online class that can thoroughly explain to us the difference between like, Slovakia, Czechia, <laughs> Czechia, the Czech Republic, and all yeah. that. I mean, it's embarrassing that I can't ever keep that straight. Yeah. But I'm very confused. We had a writer, or we had a listener once, I think, right now, kind of explain to us. It's in our Instagram comments somewhere. We should pull that Probably. out again. All right. After his NHL career, Dimitra played one season with Lokomotiv Yaroslavl of the KHL. Tragically, Pavel Dimitri was killed on September 7, 2011, when the plane carrying his locomotive Yaroslav team caught fire and crashed shortly after takeoff on its way to Minsk, Belarus. 44 of the 45 passengers and crew on the aircraft passed away. I remember Very hearing sad. that. Very sad. Sucks. It was uh, not a good day. And then I, I think. As, as we know, like flying or traveling by airplane is ex- incredibly safe. Yeah. Except in Russia. Except so, in Russia. I would, you couldn't pay me enough. You would ne- could never pay me enough to take a flight in Russia on a Russian airliner. Nope. Mm-hmm. All right. Fun, interesting facts. Dimitra didn't focus on hockey until he was 15 years old. Before then, he was more focused on soccer, which I guess almost <laughs> 90% of Europeans are probably focused on soccer. Scored a goal in his first NHL game on October 9th, 1993 versus the St. Louis Blues. Demetra is in the top 10 all time for goals, assists, and points for the St. Louis Blues. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Hey, I don't know if you can even see this. I don't even know why I put it up here, but for our YouTube viewers, well, that's not going to work very well. All right. I just wanted to show Demetra is fifth all time in points by a Slovak player in the nhl so i'll read it off one's peter statsny two mary yep. hosa three peter bonda four our boy gabrick and then fifth pavel dimitra wow good list good list definitely good list following dimitra's death the elementary school in dubnica is what i'm going with now which he attended and the ice hockey stadium in trenson where he started his successful career together with famous Slovak ice hockey players, Zdeno Chara, Marian Hosa, Marcel Hosa, and Marian Gavrik were named after him. So they changed the name of the school and the hockey stadium where he played and, and grew up. So that's kind of cool. That'd be quite the youth hockey team. There with no like kidding. Chara, Hosa, like that? Gabby, 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 Gabby. Finally, on Friday, January 19th of 2024, Dimitra was inducted into the St. Louis Blues Hall of Fame as part of the 2024 class, along with Mike Leud and Keith Kachuk. Amazing Did you ever see, see the video of that on social, like where Keith Kachuk like zoomed Pavel Dimitra's wife? I didn't. I, I found I was I didn't watch any video. I watched I saw pictures of it. Like they had his yeah. family there and stuff and everything. I, I just caught it by coincidentally when it happened and it was very touching like she was oh, yeah. genuinely shocked oh, that's and awesome. a very nice honor for his family yeah very cool very cool all right so that's our boy pavel dimitra here we go his rookie card 1992 upper deck number 602 josh it's our world junior cards are back mm-hmm. love the world juniors it's his rookie card psa 10 pop is 89 with a gem rate of 57 percent Here's the back of it. I love it. Full head of hair. <laughs> yeah. I'm all used to him being bald, but I love it. 
Last sale was on March 21st, 2024 via eBay verified terror peak for $29.99 US. So there you go. Really good player, terrible rookie yep. guard. I, ugh. Yeah. That's too bad. I almost wish I like upper deck should go back. Like that's a tribute I could get behind. Like maybe fixing some of the rookie card situations that in hindsight could have yeah. been better. So it's basically going back and giving those guys young guns. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like a guy like him, you can't do like an all time future watch because he's passed away and I'm sure they don't have tons of sticker autos left. Like what they did with Gordy Howe. Yeah. Okay. Troy week 27. Who's hot in the struggle bus. Here we go. Wrapping up the regular season. It's probably me second to last or last time we do it for the regular season. Of course, it's when we take a look at players lighting up the lamp and the guys who are playing like crap, Troy. No other way to put it. And they're riding the struggle bus. Like we always do, though, we're going to start with our picks of the best performers over the past couple weeks and go over our selections for who's hot. My guy had to go with uh, Steven Stamkos. Ever heard of him? I have. Yeah. In that, our Bermuda, are we still calling it the Bermuda Triangle? Yeah, the Bermuda down there Triangle of hobby nothingness. <laughs> Well, Troy, when you have nine goals, three assists for 12 points in seven games over the past couple weeks, I would say that's definitely who's hot worthy. All right. Every time I look up photos of Stammer, I see this photo <laughs> and I have, I feel like he's like skating, like I am Thor, God of lightning and hockey teams. Yeah. And you are, you are lucky to be in my presence. Yeah. He's got the lightning ball demon too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's just an amazing, amazing photo. Now, Stamkos Troy is one of the longest standing members of the great hockey players nobody cares about in the hobby club, or yep. as we like to call it, the GPN CAHC. Of course, known by many. Well, see, uh, we, we're not we're not followers. We don't do the three acronym like all these no. trading companies. We have seven, which you have no clue what it means. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And Kucherov has been taking a lot of his GPN CHC <laughs> shine these past couple of years, but the 33 year old Lightning captain has continued to consistently perform nonetheless. Now, Troy, speaking of our uh, club here, if you ask me tomorrow what GPN CA <laughs> means, I'll look at you like you're speaking French. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what are you talking about? On the season now, Stamkos has 39 goals, 39 assists. Is he have OCD or something like that? Like That's very pretty evenly distributed? Evenly distributed. For 78 points in 77 games played. That puts him one goal away from another 40 goal season. Wow. So, Troy, Uh-oh. if Stammer gets to 40 this year, how Ooh. many seasons will he have then with 40 or more goals in his career? Oh, God. I, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm taking it around a while. I'll say eight. Oh, it'll be seven. Oh, I was one over. Bah, bah. Yeah. So he has six, and this would be a seventh. Okay. And at 554 goals now for his career, you think he's got a pretty good shot of hitting 600 before he hangs up the skates? He's still playing well. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Away. If he wants to play now, is it going to be with Tampa Bay? Right? Wasn't I don't know. Some, well, some Very little rumblings early this year, or maybe even recently about what's they've been mad at each other for like two years. Yeah, it's got to be a hey, nice gig any- though. It's got to be a great gig being in Tampa, like yeah. just the weather and everything. <laughs> okay, so. He has a chance at 600 goals. Do you have any idea okay. how many NHL players to this point have 600 career goals? Oh, boy. Oh, I don't know. I'd, well, I don't know. 10. 20. 20. Okay. I think Yari Curry is number 20. He had just okay. like 601 or something like that. And there's actually another active player who we just talked about last show who's only nine goals away from 600. Do you remember who oh, that is? I know. It's Crosby. It's got to be Crosby. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Crosby. I've had I've done so much Crosby love. I know. <laughs> research Crosby boy, lately. Boyfriend, Crosby. Just wait, people. He's coming up later, too. So <laughs> Stamkos is also over a point per game score in his career with 1,134 points and 1,080 games played. He, of course, was the number one overall pick in the 2008 NHL draft. He's won two Stanley Cups. And Trey's Canadian. Yep. So it makes almost no sense in any stretch of the imagination why <laughs> this guy is the hobby is like almost Whatever. like meh. You know, I almost doesn't care at all, right? 
well, Tampa Bay is in the tournament this spring, so we'll see if he can make some waves during the playoffs. And I, I don't think at this point, though, it'll mean much, but just a great, great player. And, yeah, when you've got nine goals in seven games to mm-hmm. finish out the season, that's pretty That's pretty significant. Steven Stamkos is a 2008 Young Guns PSA 10 pop 436. 38% gem rate, less over 300 US dollars on April 13th. It's down about 4% in the past two weeks, but it's up 1% over the past three months. All right, you got the next guy. All right. I just, this Young Guns, every time we bring it up, we complain about it. I'm calling it like the Iron Gate, I think, from now on, because it reminds me of the well, Iron Gate. It's like gate. the gate on the, the house that scared you when you were a kid. <laughs> yeah. and you'd always, like, when you were walking by, you would start running because you were afraid that there was, like, evil things yep. at that house. Did you see who the next one is? Yeah. Dude. Oh, here we go, boys. Well, I think this is a gong show first. <laughs> Lucas Raymond, I believe, is the first player to be on the struggle bus. <laughs> and then the next week has jumped right off the struggle bus and is now on the who's hot list. So love to see it. Congratulations to Lucas Raymond for the shortest time ever between making the struggle bus and then making the who's hot list. When I saw that this morning, <laughs> here's what here's what went through my mind. I was I was initially really embarrassed for you. I'm like, <laughs> I got to text Troy and say we just did Lucas Raymond last week, and then I'm like, did we? And I looked him up, and then I got really embarrassed for me because it was on the struggle <laughs> bus, and I was no, on front of him. No, you were you were right to put him on. It was like he had like a hot streak, a dud streak, which he got on the struggle bus, and and now he's back. But Josh. I'm convinced now he must have listened to our show, was not does, happy yeah. about was not happy about being on the struggle bus. And to me, that's the best explanation of why I decided to go on a tear last week. Don't don't mind that Detroit's in a playoff hunt or anything, or that he's a really good player. Just he was he heard you. He wanted to show you something. So there, there it is. He's he's off he, the struggle bus. He's hot. Yeah, he, uh, they had the the coaches had him watch film <laughs> and oh, in the background and they turned the sound <laughs> off. And they just played the gong show on him on the struggle bus. And he got, you know, he went through all the stages of grief. He got <laughs> angry. Yep. And then frustrated. And then, you know, cried it out a little bit. Yep. And it ended up firing him up at the end. So you're, you're welcome, Lucas Raymond. You're welcome. Yeah. We'll take credit for that one. All right. Over the past week, Raymond has been on a tear. He has four goals, four assists for eight points in four games played. Anytime you average two points a game, you're usually going to end up on the who's hot list. <laughs> He has at least one point in his last four games and had a hat trick and one. Why did I put a hat trick and one point on April 11th? Probably one assist hat trick and one assist on April 11th versus the Penguins in a losing effort. Josh, as I kind of mentioned, good thing he got hot again as the Red Wings are fighting for their playoff lives in the Eastern Conference, along with the Washington Capitals and the Philadelphia Flyers and Pittsburgh Penguins four-way race. I don't know what's happened today. We're recording on Sunday. I'm assuming some of these teams have already played. I don't know what's going on, but I know there's... We got an interesting fun fact on that later about the whole Eastern Conference, the second playoff or wild card spot there. But anyways, on the season, Lucas Raymond has 29 goals, 40 assists for 69 points in 80 games played. He could surpass 70 points, which be, which be a nice bump from the 45 point campaign he had last season. It's kind of funny. He goes on this tear. Our last show with the struggle bus, we were talking about kind of, you know, he, he's increased from the down year, but it wasn't a huge jump. Well, now it yeah, might it's be like a, a huge push. jump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how he ends the career or ends the, the season, which will be very interesting to watch. All right. Our boy right here. Lucas Raymond, 2021 Young Guns, PSA 10 is a pop of 3,079. So, Josh, do you remember what it was when you did the struggle with us? No. 3,029. It went up 50 in a week, which kind of surprised me. Like, I was like, hmm, there's still people, or there's a back, is either a backlog or people still submitting these things. Have you, have you seen what's happened with the box prices on 2021? I haven't. Are they just dived, nose diving? Yeah, it's like, 45 or 50 dollars on dave oh, and adams for wow. a hobby box so it and, might pop up even more and i think a lot of card more. shows somebody in our discord sent a photo from a local car like a clearance table 
Yeah. I think it was 40 or 45 bucks too. So maybe that's oh, part of it is people are just interesting. It's such a cheap rip now. Yeah. 72% gem rate last sold for 60 us dollars on April 13th. So there we go. Lucas Raymond. Welcome to who's hot. From welcome back. Struggles. Lucas. Do you think he like just dove off it while it was still going and said, see a suckers and waved and off the bus he went. So, all right, Josh, I got the next one too. I had to put another guy on here. I, I all right. I pulled rank, I guess. I don't know what I did. Yeah, you I did. Just, You're I the boss. decided to do it. You're the boss. Yeah. So right here, this guy, Jake Ottinger. I had to pull the uh, Lakeville North picture out. To, to, to find That's so good controversial, story. too. I know, because he was he's from Farmington, our hometown, or where we live now. And so he went to Lakeville North, left Farmington, worked out yeah, for every, him. Every far you're wearing the F hat too, the Farmington Tigers. I, know, I got hat. the Farmington hat tight on. And all our good hockey players defect to either Lakeville North <laughs> yeah, or Lakeville they all, South. They all leave. Uh, sad. Anyways, so that's him in the Lakeville North jersey. But here's him actually in a Dallas Stars jersey. So Ottinger, absolute terror that I will truly, or I'll honestly admit, I kind of missed it. When I was yeah. doing research for the show, I started, I saw him and I started looking at his numbers and I was like, Holy cow, <laughs> what did I, what was I watching? And you talk about getting hot before going to the playoffs. Over his past 10 games, Josh, so going back to March 20th, Andre has a record of nine wins, one loss, with a 1.61 goals against, a .939 save percentage, and two shutouts. And That's guess good. what? Yeah, guess what? One of these shutouts was against the offensive juggernaut that is the Edmonton Oilers on April 3rd. Wow. Ottinger, yeah, Ottinger is finding his elite game right now when it matters most. All right, Ottinger, he's been up and down this season. His stats on the season, 34 wins, 14 losses, 4 overtime losses, okay? Decent from a wins perspective. However, his goals against average on the season is 2.76 with a .904 save percentage and 3 shutouts. While those aren't terrible, they are not the elite. I don't know why I'm using the elite a lot, but elite level that is expected from Ottinger. And you'll see he's kind of even says the same thing. However, what makes his hot streak so important is guess what's coming up? Playoffs, and you find a hot goalie, boy, you can you can go a long way as, as they did. What was it? Two years ago when Ottinger got crazy hot, or three years ago? I can't remember. We had that game where he had like 60 saves because they lost in overtime. Yeah. And I felt so bad for him because you should win the game just for him. Yeah. All right. And here's kind of something that's kind of crazy. So there's an article published by The Athletic by Saad Youssef, or is it Youssef, who's the Dallas beat writer for The Athletic. Okay. And this was on March 20th, 2024, which, remember, is the start. That was the start of his crazy run. So the quote was probably from the previous day. Audrey is quoted as saying, I could let in 10 goals a game for the next five games, and I'll never stop believing in myself. I know what I'm capable of, no matter what happens, what people think about me or say about me. I believe in my heart that I'm one of the best goalies in the world. It's up to me to show it now. I know I can do it. I know I can be one of the best. I've shown that. I've done that for very long periods of time. Love the quote. Part yep. seems angry. Part seems frustrated with what he's been hearing. But part of it, I love the confidence. But part of me also thinks, could you imagine him like Stuart Smalley in front of the yeah. Mirror telling himself he's good strong. enough, <laughs> good enough, strong, or whatever it is. God, yeah. or God darn it, people like that, right? <laughs> Isn't that what he, what, yeah, and he had, said? yeah, and the one where he had Michael Jordan. And, uh, okay, no, I, have, I have a goalie question that I don't okay. think I've ever asked you before. What percentage of playing goalie is physical versus mental? I don't know. Like, I mean, obviously, you gotta be a lot of it's physical, but you can see a goalie entirely break down because of the mental. And so I don't, I can't put a percentage of what it is, but it, it there's a lot more mental to it than people think. Like, mm -hmm. it's almost like the yips in baseball. Mm -hmm. You think where the guy, the just, Chuck Knobloch, Chuck Knobloch, second baseman for the twins, or was he with the Yankees when that happened? I can't remember. Yeah. Where. He left for the money and then he literally could no longer throw could, a ball to first base. And Rick and Keel was pitcher for the Cardinals yep. had the same thing, could not throw a strike, but then he actually ended up doing pretty well when they moved to the outfield. Oh, yeah. But goalies, goalies is so mental. They can just get in their own head, and it's a disaster. But, again, love the quote. Now, mm -hmm. let's go back to the All-Star game. And Ottinger was quoted during the festivities there saying, 
It's probably been the hardest season mentally that I've ever had in my life. I feel like I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself and letting outside factors get to me and take the fun out of it. Just for me, it's not physical things right now or anything technical. It's just getting back to having fun and not worrying about the end result and instead worrying about what goes into getting the end result. Hence, the mental aspect of the game, <laughs> which you just asked about. So again, this just shows how how big the mental aspect of being a goalie. Was he getting dogged a lot, like in the media? I don't. Remember. I think there was some rumblings, like you know, you're not oh. you're not what we thought you were. And again, he's still young, though. I can't remember exactly his age, but 25, 26, something yeah, like that. It's it's crazy, but yeah, I mean, there is some doubt coming in, but that always happens. It's it's the nature of what we live in today. The news mm-hmm. cycle, the social media, instant access. It's just a lot of that stuff happens. Were you ripping him in his in like the DMs and making <laughs> no, fun of him? Or? Texting him, hey buddy, start saving the puck. But anyways, he's found his hot streak right now. The Dallas Stars got to be loving it because best time in this in the in the season to find to start getting hot. All right, mm-hmm. Andre, 2020 Young Guns. Here's this PSA 10 is a pop of 1,176 with a gem rate of 52 percent. Last sold for 85 US dollars on April 13th on eBay Verified and Terapeak. Basically, what it was selling for at the beginning of the season. That's a, I actually really like his young guns. I go, it's on, it's unbelievable. I when I wrote that, I looked at this card and I thought to myself, just it's a really nice looking card. Like I really like this card. It's not, it's not too crazy. It's just a really nice goalie picture. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Okay, I guess I'm gonna keep going, Josh. Oh no, shoot. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh. I'm just yeah. gonna turn my mic off and fall asleep, and then you just like. Text me when I'm ready to come back on the show because you're doing all the heavy lifting, Troy. I know. I'm going to pay you more. Oh, there it is, Troy. The struggle bus. All right. I was I was a little nervous. I thought I missed it. I was talking and I just I didn't know you where know, it went. But it, it I watch like a hawk for that struggle bus. <laughs> struggle bus always knows where it's going. All right, Josh, struggle bus time. You talk about the opposite of Ottinger. You got it here with Colorado. Alexander Georgiev. Oh, boy. So Colorado has to be. Where Dallas is happy as, I don't know, a pig in mud <laughs> over how Ottinger's playing. Colorado has to be freaking out a little because their number one goalie has now had a pretty cold, pretty big cold streak. I will say this. Colorado was playing earlier today. We're recording this on Sunday. They were up two zip against Vegas. So I don't know what happened. And Georgia was in net, but, hmm. and Mark Stone was out there miraculously, I think. I don't know if he was out there, if he can't come back to the playoffs. But, anyways, I digress. Since March 30th, Georgia has a record of one win, three losses, with a 6.2 goals against average and a 0.835 save percentage and no shutouts in five games played. That ain't very good, Josh, if you didn't know. On the season, Georgia has 38 wins, 18 losses, four overtime losses, with a 3.00 goals against average and a .897 save percentage and two shutouts in 62 games played. Again, good from a wins perspective, not good from a goals against and save percentage perspective. Mm Mm-hmm. Good thing Colorado is tied for the lead in the NHL in goals scored with 296 as of the date I did my research. In his last game against Winnipeg on April 13th, Georgiev got pulled after four goals in the first period with a couple of the goals being pretty soft. Not good, again, going into the playoffs against, guess who, the same Jets team they were playing when he got pulled. Oh, that's their first-round matchup? Yep. Yeah. Head coach Jared Bednar had this to say about Georgiev. He didn't make the big save tonight. He's grouped in with the rest of them. I didn't love either one of them either, saying the backup goalie they put in, he mm-hmm. wasn't happy with him either. So we will go back to our starter, Troy Georgiev. Not exactly yeah. the vote of confidence from the head coach, where he's basically saying, you're in between the lines, you're the default option. We're just, I guess we're going to go back to you. So Georgiev doesn't have much time to find his game before the playoffs begin. It will be interesting to see how Colorado responds, how Georgia responds. And again, you have an offensive juggernaut team that can make up for defensive deficiencies. But if they don't and Georgia struggles, it's going to be a, a rough goal for Colorado. And I have just, an observation. Yeah, just tell ahead. me if I'm onto something here. So I'm going back to his March 30th perform- 
performance since March 30th. So he's got 6.2 goals against, but at 8.35 save percentage, which is bad. But doesn't it seem though like that that save percentage is actually a little bit higher than you would assume with a six goal? Like you're on mute. Oops, sorry. Like he, yeah, my point is, he, is he getting a ton of shots? Like where's the blue line? Where's Kale McCarr? What happened? Yeah, well, I think you could read in Bender's quote there that that he's saying he's grouped in with the rest of the team. Like the whole team's playing like junk. Not crap. Yeah. So yeah, he probably did get a lot of shots during that time. Okay, Georgia, 2017 Young Guns. But remember, Josh, his Young Guns was in 2017 SP Authentic as an update card. I I just do it's not like, like every Rangers cards. goalie. I just can't stand these cards. I can't. I can't stand the picture. I, I get why they're there, and I get it all. This is a young guns on the struggle bus too, and we just had the <laughs> the Ottinger, which is such a beautiful card. Yes. This is this is and awful. Then, then this one bad. PSA ten pop of this card, Josh thirty five gem rate of forty six percent. Card does not sell often. So let's see. Low pop, low gem rate. We know where this is going. Last sale on eBay and verified in Terapeak was for three hundred US dollars. On January 8th of this year. Previous sales before that was on October 30th of last year, 2023, for 180 US dollars. Wow. In general, though, overall, I'm still very impressed with the maybe somewhat of a bold move that Colorado did after winning the Stanley Cup in Get rid of Kemper. Getting rid of Kemper and yep. then trading for the New York backup, Georgiev, who Although has not played well lately, of course, has I think overall been pretty solid for him. Yeah, there's it's this season's been a whirlwind. It seems like there's boy the Denver paper I can't remember what it's called. They were they weren't after him for a while. Oh, the Denver <laughs> especially Post. in the last week or so, they were they didn't pull any punches. And I will say this though, I swear Nathan McKinnon. The more I watch this guy lately, like I haven't I don't watch him that much, but lately he's played against the Wild. And I started watching another game. I think it was yesterday, two days ago. I just never seen a guy from a standstill pull away from people like him. Mm-hmm. It is unbelievable. I think him and McDavid are the two most impressive yeah. skaters to watch in the NHL. Like, it's probably not even close. No. One more guy in the struggle bus, Troy. Yep. Sitting next to Alexander Georgiev <laughs> is uh, your guy, Quentin Byfield. Yeah, looks like he's trying to play goalie in this picture. <laughs> yeah, you like that picture? <laughs> In the last two weeks, the Kings, 21-year-old Kings forward, played eight games with zero goals and zero assists. That'll put you on the struggle list. Yes, it will. Also gone 17 games now, Troy, without scoring a goal. All while on the Kings' top line. Playing with uh, your favorite PLD currently and Adrian Kempe. Oh, wow. maybe maybe PLD is like depressing him or something like that. Well, they said that. I'm looking it up now. I want to see what his ice time is uh i think he's been getting punished a little bit i think he had like 10 minutes the other game yeah is... so if if it looks yeah he did get they did give him a 10 minute but he's got 16 14 14 14 yeah. enough that you should score at least a couple i points read a bunch of articles now. and there was definite references to his last couple weeks but nothing like glaring as to why he's been struggling so much Maybe it's just the normal ups and downs and inconsistencies yeah. that we see You know, are typically a challenge for younger players. Any Kings fans that watch all the games have some insights for us, please message and, and comment there. I think the team overall has done pretty good lately, so maybe he'll kind of find his game again for the playoffs. On the season now, Troy Byfield has 19 goals, 34 assists for 53 points and 78 games played. It's a huge improvement over last year when he had just three goals and 22 points. I think this year, too, has given Kings fans some hope that he will pan out and live up to the expectations that come with being the number two overall pick. His hobby market's juiced up a little bit, too, especially since December. We've seen a lot of bigger byfield sales. What happened, too, that I think helped is the realization that he was going to have a much better year coincided with the release of 2021, 22, the cup. Mm-hmm. And so we saw a lot of, you know, healthy byfield sales there in total. Actually, since the start of the season, there's been 45 
sales of Byfield cards for 500 US or more. So that's pretty strong. And then Byfield's a 2021 Young Guns PSA 10 pop 1826, 65% gem rate. Last sold for 61 US dollars on April 12th. It is up 11% in the past two weeks, but is down 13% oh. over the past month. Hold on. Here it is. Yeah. Sorry, YouTubers. Did you see California Dave's message about Byfield? No, what did he, he say? Well, he was saying that the Kings right now have three really balanced top three lines. They're pretty balanced. And being him on the top line, they get thrown out against the other team's top line a lot. So maybe that's contributing to it. But said no excuse for, yeah, <laughs> for the excuse. struggle. And did you see his mailbag question? Did you get it added? No, I didn't add it. We can do it. <laughs> he wants to do it. We have a listener that wants to know what to do with a lot of leftover younger bobbleheads. So if you've listened to previous shows, you get the joke. But you get the joke. Bring bring some to the expo. That's all I'll say. Okay, there's who's hot and the struggle bus for week 27 in the NHL. Just to recap, we had Stammer, Steven Stamkos, Lucas Raymond slides up from the struggle bus <laughs> into who's hot, and then our boy Audi, Jake Ottinger. And this week on the struggle bus, Alexander Georgiev and yep. Quentin Byfield. Thanks. Nice. Hey, got to make a quick mention for Gong Show partner and sponsor Slab Sharks. We, of course, are very, very grateful to them for their support of our show. Troy, the current Slab Sharks weekly eBay auction is live. Be sure to head to slabsharks.com for a link to the auction so you can find some awesome hockey cards for your PC or just to have for a short time, whatever your goal is, and place your bids. Yesterday morning, which was Saturday, like I was doing, went through the auction, picked out some of the amazing cards in this week that gave me hard eyes, Troy, and I wanted to highlight a little bit. Like, do you have a and coffee I, and like in your robe and you're just sitting there perusing the Slap Sharks auction? A cigar, a Nicaraguan <laughs> cigar. And I did something kind of crazy, Troy. Oh. I picked five non Bedard cards to highlight nice. for today's nice. show. Stay strong. What, hap- what happens now? Do I get arrested? Is it bad? <laughs> I don't understand. Hobby, hobby, hockey, hobby suspension. I think a week. Okay, so here's the five cards that even if you don't like Connor Bedard, that you can yep. find in this week's Slap Sharks auction. First one, 2020-21, the Cup. Connor McDavid emblems of endorsements. Patch auto out of 15 PSA eight. Kind of a really cool McDavid card. I love the double patch windows in yep. the emblems cards. You got one. One of the windows is a three color. The other one's a two color. And although I'm not typically a fan of like the big like Crayola marker <laughs> autos, <laughs> I was gonna say a joke. I was gonna say I think they should have got a bigger pen for this. <laughs> but I like the shade of blue on this one. Yes, shade of blue is cool. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Not, not. I'm not it. always a fan of the really thick, thick card, but love the shade of blue. Looks great. Great looking card. Okay, the next one is a really nice looking card too, yes. and I get yes. to say flop. Flop. 2019-20 SB Authentic. Kale McCarr. Flop. Out of 100. BGS 910. Awesome patch and great out of... This might be... It is. One of my, one of the, one of my more favorite now rookie yep. patch auto cards. Very. It's awesome. I love... It's horizontal, which, again, I, I don't know why. This is the second week in a row where I'm like, well, this one's okay on the horizontals. But I love the... Like, I don't know. Just the the... The style, the little lines they put in here, the future. Yeah, I just think details. it looks really, really good. Has a nice little spot for the autograph. I love that. Guess what, Josh? I got a string coming off the oh, patch, but I love, I love that. that. That means it was worn. It was this game. Is are these patch worn? Are these game used? I don't think so. Shoot, you have to look at well, the back. He ripped it when he was scratching his chest or something. I don't know. <laughs> scratching his chest. <laughs> the mental image I wanted. <laughs> what's happening to you in this show versus Sidney Crosby <laughs> now McCarr. our first show you did not like him you were oh you did anytime he came up you <laughs> puckered lip faces and now you like horizontal cards are you gonna be like a grading card company fan no, like oh no, no weeks or something like that what's Dora, I'll, I'll redeem myself when we talk about VGS all right again uh, I just think an awesome card and if I had a Kale McCarr RPA I think I'd want this one Next one, 2019-20, the Cup, Jack Hughes, Exquisite Collection, RPA, out of 86, PSA 9. Big fan of this card, mainly because I just think the patch is amazing. Great patch. He looks shocked or surprised of what's going on on the ice, whatever's happening, but 
Again, a nice spot for the auto. Clean auto. Looks really nice. Great card. Well, I, he's surprised. I'm surprised he's not like doubled over. There is no <laughs> player that, because we look for stuff like this. If you do just Google Jack Hughes and go to images, and about every other photo is him like laid out on the ice for like <laughs> trainers. I don't think anyone's <laughs> been more injured than Jack Hughes. We'll talk about that a little bit later too. But I love how these are out of the jersey number two. Yeah. And the fact that he signed his jersey number with it kind of is kind of cool there too. So I'm a big fan of that card. X on Troy. 2021 22 Upper Deck Cole Coffee with Young Guns exclusives out of 100. BGS awesome. 9.5. True yeah. Gem Plus. Yeah, he's uh, been a lot better the last month or so. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're still a Cole Caulfield truther, that we're actually in a decent buying time because, you know, I think the market kind of got past him a little bit yep. this year and focused on other guys. Of course, True Gem Plus means that all four subgrades are at least 9.5, and then one of the subgrades is a 10. And this is actually, like, to me, I don't know if you feel the same way, but... These are the Beckett slabs that intrigue me a little bit. And I haven't done like a deep analysis of the cards condition. So I'm purely being like a label snob here. Is it this, what, what, what about it? Well, this. I just had the fact that, that it's like, could it be even a, like the, the true gem plus thing? Like it's oh, I see. more than a gem mint. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. It's just a really, really, it should be based on the grade, a fantastic representation of the card. Well, it's, to me, it's funny. It's 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 amazing that this company that actually is the only one that really gives you the detail. The detail just has botched it so much. Yeah. And then the last one, Troy, is a 2021-22, the cup. Timu Solani, emblems, second emblems of endorsements Ooh, card. That's cool. Patch auto out of 50 in raw. Ridiculous patches. Yes. There's so much going on with those patches. It's kind of like you have to wrap your head around it. And then he's got it. He's got a little bit of a scribble auto, but I, I, I like it, though. Yeah, I can see the T and the S. That's good enough for me right now. He probably uses more ink on a one signature than any <laughs> other player in the NHL history. Oh, what's it? No, there's that guy for the Devils. It's really, it's a big loopy auto, but it's really Yeah, long. I remember that one. I can't remember his name now. I have it, I think. I think it was Future Watch. Uh, well, these are just a few of the great cards in the auction. Of course, there's there are tons of awesome Bedard cards. There's like hundreds of Bedard cards. Mm -hmm. So if you're into Bedsy, go to slabsharks.com and get a link to the auction. And Troy, if you're a Canadian hockey cards collector and are looking for an easy and hassle way for you to convert some of your cards to cash, we would recommend checking out Slab Sharks eBay consignment services. They make it easy because they do all the work. You don't have to take photos. You do not have to list cards or answer via questions, hunt down payments. You don't have to ship to the winner or mm -hmm. even worry about any post-sale issues. It's pretty awesome. Slab Sharks will take care of everything. Your cards are also included in their very popular and growing weekly auctions. So for complete consignment information and to start the process of consigning your cards today, head to SlabSharks.com. Hobby news. Hobby news. Loaded hobby news. Loaded. Oh my gosh. So much to cover. But we always got to start with our favorite. The Road to Infinity, Troy. Where we track each show. The rise to likely unprecedented heights of the PSA 10 <laughs> pop down for the Connor Bedard base Young Guns. If you remember on last Thursday's show, the Bedard Young Guns PSA 10 pop down climbed to 1,145 with the 46% gem rate. Now, just four days later, Troy, here we are. We're from 1,145. We've climbed all the way up to 1,402. So we were wondering if we got above fourteen hundred, right? Were we talking about, or maybe I'm just well. I, I think what we've been here. kind of debating is will it hit two thousand before the end of the month? That's we're tracking right. maybe a pitch behind that, but mm. it'll be close. Okay. Gem rate is still forty six percent now. Troy three thousand sixty five. Wow. But dar based young guns have already been graded by PSA at a PSA ten pop count of fourteen. Oh, two, and according to Card Ladder, this card, Troy, is already now ranked 22nd for most PSA 10s for a Young Guns ever. Ever <laughs> month. <laughs> month and a half? Yeah. Is that how long it's been out? And then I look too, because it's kind of curious, well, how many sales have there been? According yeah. to Card Ladder as well, there's now been an 
uh, even on the nose, 300 base Young Guns PSA 10 sales for the Connor Bedard Young Guns to this point. So really probably over the last three weeks. Yeah. Moving on up, Troy. It's moving on yep. up. Any, uh, any comments on the road to infinity? No, nope, I just keep watching it and keep, mm-hmm. keep shaking my head that the number keeps going up and up and up, which we will know. Well, I just, the rate is the one thing that cu- I'm curious about. Okay. Next story. Pretty big one. Mm. We're going to have the, the Yotes, Troy. Uh, Utah what, what Yotes. was your, f- yeah. What was your favorite? Ar- well, no, we'll talk about that in a minute. What was your favorite Arizona Coyotes moment? Gretzky's wife getting investigated for gambling. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> He pinned his wife on his wife. <laughs> well, yeah, who, it was remember it's the whole Rick Tockett. I know. Gretzky's I can't wife. take the fall. <laughs> Janet, you have to take it. Janet, that's the name, right? Yeah, Janet Gretzky. Well, it looks like the team is headed to Utah as the Yotes players were getting cranky and they want to know what's going on. So the Arizona GM flew up there last Friday and kind of let them know before the game. So the team's going to play its games in in Utah next season and beyond. The move is a result, Troy, of multiple failed attempts for the team to find a permanent arena location in Arizona. For the last few years now, they've been playing their home games on the Arizona State University campus at Mullet Arena. I'm kind of, we should have gone there for a a game at Mullet. I'm kicking myself. Do you get into anything about Scottsdale? No, I'll I'll let you cover that. Well, I was going to say the owner or the mayor, I think it was Scott Sailor's owner. The mayor said, Arizona, don't you come near here and don't you build a rink or anything? Because guess what? We have no infrastructure for you and we have no water. <laughs> like all the water is being used. So what are you going to use? Oops. It was pretty, pretty crazy. You kind of need that for ice. <laughs> well, just, I think Hi. just of everything like toilets and all that stuff. But The team Troy has been in Arizona s- since moving from Winnipeg in 1996. So it's sad. Almost 30 years now. Yeah. Been a very tumultuous existence in Arizona. Yep. Multiple ownership changes, a name change from Phoenix yep. to Arizona, and three different home arenas. How many teams have played in three different <laughs> arenas in seven or 30, 28 years? Yeah. So purchasing the team are Ryan and Ashley Smith, who also own the Utah Jazz. Is Apparently, this confirmed? I- like, is it? Yeah, the NHL hasn't announced. They've announced this. They said this it's is pretty all. much a done deal. Okay. Every, uh, okay. The who's the big Canadian? Like the Adam Schefter, uh, Elliot Friedman is. Oh, that Pierre Le- LeBron. No, it's the Elliot Friedman. Ke- I think. Who? Elliot Friedman. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a done deal. So purchasing the team are Ryan and Ashley Smith, who also own the Utah Jazz. So again, apparently next season the Oats will play at the Delta Center where the Jazz play. Yeah. The league will require either significant updates to the Delta Center or a new NHL specific arena for long term. Hmm. Though, like, you know, they have to do one or the other. Yeah. Now here, here's where it gets kind of interesting. Current Coyotes owner Alex Marullo Troy will retain the rights to the name Arizona Coyotes and all associated trademarks. And stats and records and I mean, are you sure you want that? <laughs> <But> <laughs> he's also going to be given a five-year window by the NHL to build an arena in Arizona and apply for an expans- an expansion team. Course, so it may so- not be yeah. the end of the Yotes in Arizona. That does mean, though, that the Utah team will have a new name, logo, and color scheme. I got so, ideas. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, we'll get into that. <laughs> Yeah. But I don't know if Alex Maru, I mean, I'm maybe Coyotes fans can't stand him. But for the love of God, if whomever they could, whether it be the Minnesota government, could have kept our North Star's name and records. Yeah. And uh, that that's like, I'm more bitter about that than the <laughs> team moving. Yeah. There's actually some consternation with our friends north of the border, Troy. It should be. Canada. That yeah, they, sh- they should be angry. Like cities like Quebec City, which is larger than the Salt Lake City metro area, and already has, a, as you can imagine, much more hockey infrastructure in place. We're not considered. They have a rink Canada that's ready feels, to go. It's a ready to go NHL arena. 
Canada feels jilted in general. Like could like Hamilton, they say like the Toronto greater Toronto market support. Well, I mean, it's kind of, you think about it. There can be two teams in New York. Mm-hmm. There can be two hockey teams in Toronto. Nope. I did reach out to Adam Gray, who's a he's very, very well known in the basketball card world. He's the publisher of the basketball card fanatic magazine. Know him a little bit. He used to work at PWCC. Yep. He lives in Salt Lake City. And so I just wanted to get a, a sense from him as to kind of what the vibe is there. And he said that they're like on cloud nine, that the market is has been starving for more sports. And it's a great sports market. It's got a lot more diverse than you might think. And that he thinks there's going to be a ton of support for the team there. So that's kind of the backdrop. A lot to dig into. Uh, just your overall thoughts on the move, Troy. I'm fine with it, I guess. I'm, I'm, I am mad for Quebec, though. I think Quebec has been starving for a second or for another chance and for a team. But it seems like Gary Bettman has no interest in putting another team in Canada. So I don't think anything happens until Bettman's out of there. I, for my, I just it boggles my mind they would give the Arizona guy another shot if he wants yeah. to try to get another hockey team. You had your chance, you blew it. It's like Atlanta. I wonder if that was to force him to, to give up. You know what I mean? Maybe like, to stop fighting. Yeah. So I, they had to do something. Now, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with Utah. I've, I've actually never been to. I flew over Salt Lake City. It's about as close as I've gotten. It's one of the prettiest cities you can ever go yeah, to. Yeah, I've heard it's, it's really, it's, really cool. I mean, the very clean the mountains. Um, I wonder, I do wonder if, if it will be hard to get or not. I, it might be a hard sell for some players given some of the laws and regulations around alcohol, maybe, or just nightlife. I know I, this was a long time ago. I know the nightlife wasn't the greatest, <laughs> but maybe Adam, like I said, yeah. it's kind of changed a lot more diverse. Yeah. So I'm fine with it. I do think Quebec city is getting screwed though. <laughs> oh, names, team names. Okay. So I saw this. I'm not breaking news someone said that the and this nhl team has to buy the utah grizzly name from i don't know who it was an eight if they an nhl team i don't even know who the utah grizzlies are but they oh, have that, that's really- the one that's the one thing that i should mention too that the owner the current owner of the arizona coyotes gets he gets to retain their ahl team as well okay but so the, 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 Grizz- the utah grizzlies are echl and so they have an awesome symbol it looks really cool i probably should pull nice. it up them. Hold on, hold on. Let me bring it up. Okay. Behind the scenes here. Oh, geez. Here we go. I'm gonna put it at the end. There's there's the the grizzly oh, I symbol. I like that. <laughs> it's really cool. Or else they, you know, I the I think conventional wisdom say it. They do something around bees, honey, or something like bees, because that Utah is known for bees. And really? Honey. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I always thought the Dino Hornet lake. Most national cool. parks of any state, right? Oh, I have no idea. I think so. I think there's seven in Utah. Really? I always thought so that, that might, you have like Arches, Zion National Park. Well, here's kind of the, the exciting thing on the name thing for the people of Utah. So there. the only team they have is <laughs> it's like any Dino Hornets thing. It is a Dino the, Hornet. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. The only thing, the only, I think they have an MLS team now, but traditionally Utah's only had the Jazz. And of course, the Jazz makes no sense for Utah because it yeah. was the New Orleans Jazz, and then it moved to Utah and they kept the name. So this is kind of like their first shot of actually naming their own team. Also, like the L.A. Lakers, who were stolen from Minneapolis. L.A. Lakers makes no sense. Minneapolis Lakers makes a lot of sense because we have lakes. Mm-hmm. Anywho, I digress. You- well, you talked about like, will the players be happy? Yeah, I don't know. It's probably not the most exciting city. You're also losing the no income tax part of state income tax part of Arizona, mm. like the whole like weather golf thing. So, and I wonder what this does to well, because Portland I know is wants a team too, but it's crazy that they would put a team in Portland with Seattle right there, especially on mm-hmm. the West Coast. But Utah is closer to Portland. So I don't know if that hurts Portland's chances. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and you mentioned like the, the players it, and this news officially coming out. I'll say again, it came out because they basically demanded to know what was going on. So it seems yeah. like, which I can imagine if you don't have mm-hmm. no idea what's happening and there's been so much turmoil around yeah. where they're going to be for 
years now that it's probably gotten pretty old. Yeah. Okay, so from a fan base perspective, do you think Salt Lake City or Utah is a better hockey market or worse hockey market than Arizona? I'll go with, boy, I don't know. You get a lot of snowbirds in Arizona. I know. So like, I can't believe it. Like, Austin Matthews isn't from Utah, Troy. He's yeah, that's Arizona. true. I mean, I would I would think Arizona, but they obviously couldn't support the team or Phoenix mm-hmm. area, whatever it is. So give Utah a shot, I guess. So do you think Arizona should get another crack? And whether it's with the current owner or not, do you think? Or have they? Not before some other team, other cities. Not before Quebec mm-hmm. City. I think there's other markets. You had your shot, maybe eventually down the road, but you shouldn't get the next crack after Utah. Like we shouldn't bring the next team to Arizona. Are we in agreement too that if the NHL goes back to Quebec City, it has to be the Nordiques? <laughs> I would love. I it. think I would I lose if, my mind. Yeah, I don't know what the whole legality. Oh, does Colorado is. own that? Yeah, I mean it's part of the franchise. Oh, they would run into like the problem we had now. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Oh, it's the same thing with with uh, Carolina, too. Yep. Can't hold these brands hot. <laughs> okay, so what's the impact on the hobby market? Is this a good thing? Is it bad? Because Arizona has a lot of, like, you got Logan Cooley, our guy from Clayton Bo Keller. Bofers, Row the Boat, Sky Yuma, right? Yep. And Clayton Keller has been really good. Look yeah. at his stats. I mean, he's just irrelevant in Arizona. Does this juice up? these guys hobby markets at all i don't, I, I don't know how it can juice up their hobby market but maybe i don't know it, it just the being in the news of what's going on a little bit but i don't see how salt lake city becomes this hockey hobby hotbed mm-hmm. yeah it'd be fascinating and it's not a lot of time to come up with a whole new brand and mm-hmm. logo and they're gonna have to I wonder if they'll do like the commanders thing or like the PWHL thing and like punt on it for a year and just do the like Utah like, hockey like, team or whatever. Yeah. All right. Another big story, Troy. Yeah, this one's weird. Have you ever had buyer's remorse in the hobby? Like oh. now, tr- like Sorry, where you sp- <laughs> spilled the beans too early. That's right. Yes, I have. I like have. You spend like a couple hundred bucks on a card or yep. a box. And then the next day you're like, that was dumb. Why did I do that? Yep. Well, Troy, have you ever spent $3.72 million on <laughs> cards and done that? No. Having you come close to that price for anything, house, cars, nothing. Well, now you can show Troy. There's a real estate agent okay. in Ontario named Jack Arshosky. Well, he sure has. He is the dude who ponied up almost $4 million U.S. dollars. This guy oh, right sorry. here. For the sealed case of 1979-80 OPG. And apparently he's now having second thoughts. He's also only made partial payments to Harriet. Now, this is kind of we're getting into inside. You know, we have to admit, we don't typically play at the $4 million level with auction houses. And so it's like partial payments. Apparently he's sent Heritage $3 million of the $3.7 yeah. million. And so still owes him $720,000. Now, why hasn't he paid in full? That's the question. Mm-hmm. I guess he's had a change of heart owning the world's most expensive brown box. <laughs> Here's what he had to say. Because I'm not so passionate about it as I've seen like other people in the sports collecting world. Like how they're so into it. It's like their lives kind of revolve around it. What? I have so many. Qu- I have so many <laughs> what? That's your quote? Oh boy. So he so try I would bet you dollars to donuts. <laughs> that was a button bar moment. Oh, then his on. wife found out. Uh, his wife found out about it, and was like, "Uh, no, get rid of this." Yes. Uh, yeah. So now Jack is scrambling a bit to find someone else to complete the transaction. Apparently, he's offered the case to Drake and Wayne Gretzky himself. Did he call you, Troy. Didn't call. You, didn't call you, Gretzky's not going to buy this thing. Drake's probably actually a better bet than Gretzky to buy this thing. Okay, there's like a million things to unpack here. How do you spend four million dollars on something and then like six days later are like eh, I'm not really passionate about it? So there's there's a piece of the story we're missing. Obviously, yeah, because he's and the weird thing is too, but the pain of the three million, like what? I 
you you're not intending to buy it, but you've already paid three million. And I did read one article where they said Heritage has done they they do give buyers time if they're trying to get financing and stuff for this kind of stuff thing. But it sounds like this guy has the money. Just something is well. Missing. He said that There's... he feels like it's safer there, and Heritage is like we're not a vault. I mean, apparently yeah, they're the only people this. that aren't a vault, but yeah. Yeah, there's something like missing. It's like that South Park skit where it's like, what, underpants, <laughs> question mark, profit. I, I feel like I'm missing something in this thing. And then the, like all the articles and you watch the news stories, he goes on and on about like how he had this like emotional reaction to hearing about the underbidder not winning, but yet he's offering it to everyone else but the underbidder <laughs> thing, which gave me an idea. This is another gong show ADHD moment where I spent Uh-oh. way too much time. So I, I can't thinking about underbidders. I came up with an idea. Mm-hmm. You ready? Yes. We're going to get rich, Troy. We're going to start a comic series <laughs> that I'm very confident will be made into multiple movies. Nice. It's our, we're going to have our first gong show superhero named underbidder. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> He, he fights she. show bidding and unpaid auctions all nice. throughout the hobby. <laughs> you think of the same thing I'm trying? Yeah. This is movie franchise written all over it. Now, I, I only, came up with another I, version. I only sign off if Kevin Smith does it, though. Okay. I came up <laughs> with another version, another prototype to Underbitter. Okay. I can show that one now. You got to tell me which one you like better. Oh, second one by far. He's got the little hockey club, a hockey stick to beat people with. <laughs> kind of a little Deadpool-esque, right? It's Deadpool but, with Black Panther, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. So that's more of a Black Panther the style, but the obviously it's Deadpool. Okay, so we like this version. Now, <laughs> I just as saw you know, the, I just saw the buckle, the big belt yeah. buckle. Every superhero has a backstory, so I came up All with right. one. His backstory, Underbitter, is he's a high school goalie coach by day and auction vigilante by night. <laughs> Troy, meet Trey Bliverson, <laughs> a former hockey goalie. Who's headed for stardom until he got mixed up with the wrong crowd and his dreams ended on a fateful night when he was arrested and lost <laughs> his scholarship. After years of drinking and abusing over the counter drugs like Pepto Bismol <laughs> and a severe baby aspirin addiction, <laughs> Trey meets skate sharpening master Jeremy Lee Strongblade, <laughs> he takes his him under his wing and unleashes Underbitter to save the hobby. Yes, yes. Copy. Like we it? copyright this. We copyright, copyright this. You, say that. you have to say that or else someone can take it. <laughs> we copyright all this. What color Ferrari are you going to pick out when our <laughs> trilogy gets greenlit, right? Oh, boy. We can have matching Ferraris. My license plate will be under and yours will be bitter. <laughs> and we well, can be is... at a stoplight. We have to be on the right side, though. Otherwise, <laughs> be like bitter under. This is the only reason we're going to the expo. We're going to start trying to pitch under bitter around everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Your shirt. ADHD oh, moment. Over. Yes, I love it. Let's get back to Realtor Jack guy. All right, Realtor Jack guy. I kind is. of agree with you. The more I think about this, this this is so weird. And why would you li- look up this story? Like, do a Google news search. There's four thousand news yeah. stories. Isn't this embarrassing? Like, yeah, like, why are you going? What's is he messed up in the head? Or I don't understand this. Like, why is he? Why would you want to go on like every news outlet and be like, yeah, I bought something. And I, oh, I did the same thing too, trying to find out what's on the shelves. Yeah, you got the Polaroid videos, uh, the VCR tapes, the VHS. And then this, this head, I think these are headphones, wireless JVCs, some books. Just try to see what was on there. Uh, so help me understand what's going on here because I'm I'm confused. I don't I don't know. I think that there's a piece missing that I don't understand. Oh zoom in on that card too. That does it look like a repo? That card looks very like so it's gotta be a if it's real. No, that's too good. Look at that. I don't think that no, I don't think this it's is a real a, card. I think it's a reproduction. That oil drops perfect. Have you ever well it is off oh, top. Oh, it's if off, it's top it's, if it's tops yeah. though, it would be I just think the coloring is like too. Oh, this has to be tops, tops, right? Because there's no, uh, there's no green dot on the under, left yeah. shoulder. Yeah. So it might it be might tops, be and the color looks a little better too. So it probably it might be legit. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if Wayne Gretzky or Drake or Troy <laughs> or 
Tom Brady, who knows? Buys or Underbitter comes by and whaps him in the head. Underbitter. Yeah, I, this guy better watch out. <laughs> Underbitter's hot on his trail. Okay, Troy Fanatics announced yeah. their first big event, Fan Fest, which okay. is coming to New York City this August 16th through 18th. Okay. Like Fanatics has been doing with everything, they're kind of going big here, Troy. Yeah. At the Javits Center, which is a huge convention center in New York. 400,000 square feet is our event. Whew. That is bigger than the National. Bigger it's than like, Toronto. <laughs> yeah, bigger than Toronto, too. Everything they unveil seems like that they're pushing the envelope. And, and, and not in a bad way, but it's like they're kind of making everything bigger and more, I don't know. Yeah, just bigger mm-hmm. than almost even the hobby. Early guests announced are sort of a who's who in the sports world. Derek Jeter, Tom Brady, Kevin Durant. Sabrina Ionescu, the Manning Bros, Peyton and Eline, Hulk Hogan, and then Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, V Friends, really? I guess. I don't, I don't know. They need a, a I gotta believe Caitlin Clark's gonna be here. Like, oh, yeah. They'd be stupid not to bring her. They will have content, items, and event for every league, including the NHL. Saw that. Oh. Saw that. I'm wondering, I'm really curious how the whole how NHL plays into this because me too. Does Upper Deck show up? I mean, what? And it looks like it's only sports, right? Only sports? I think it's only Fanatics. Also, maybe top stickers and stuff like that. Well, they'll be the jersey supplier next year. So oh, the, yeah, 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 sorry. It's, it, and, and is it, it's all sports, right? It's not just cards. It's not like a card show, right? It's everything. Well, it's everything. So he, some of the things or events that will be offered, yeah, I was they're going to have card go. trading areas, live breaks, which makes sense, of course, with Fanatics Live, Athlete meet and greets, main stage events, a fanatic store, sports and trading card memorabilia museum. Oh, there, you there you go. A museum truck. Do you know the Hockey Hall of Fame has a bunch of hockey cards in it? There's a whole upper right. deck exhibit, I think, if I remember yeah. right. And then I'll they're going to have ex- exclusive product and merch drops. Well, I, I'm with you. I'm going to be really curious to see how much of an NHL presence will actually be there. You, you know, like with all these rookie auto issues that Upper Deck's been having. Mm-hmm. Maybe Fanatics assign some of these guys and we'll bring them there. Uh, there's a bunch of ticket options up already. VIP is $465 for the whole event. Oh, come on. Really? Adult, adult three-day pass is the, the 465 is with tax. What do I get? I don't know. You treat like a VIP. Three-day passes is I... for adults are about 50 bucks a day, and the kids are anywhere from 30 23 to 35 dollars a day okay here you go okay vip you get all access friday saturday sunday first access friday saturday sunday skip the line access to the product drops that'd be interesting 25 dollars in fan cash a gift bag okay that's a big first event though that's for sure is this something that interests you, like, you... i don't i don't know i i really don't know I'm, it almost interests me because it's the first one, and I want to see what's there. But if I walked in and found one little thing of hockey, I'm out. Like the other stuff really doesn't. I guess the new product drops, new product drop stuff is kind of interesting. Um, well, well, maybe you know we are sponsored by Fanatics. We sometimes forget that because it's not yeah. PWCC. Maybe we can weasel our way in here. Maybe it'll be. Come to Fanatics Fan Fest this August. Meet Tom Brady, Derek yeah. Peter, and Troy from the Hockey Cards. <laughs> no, I'm I'm more interested as it being the first thing. I don't understand what it is completely. That's kind of my hesitation. Plus, I want hockey, and they you know they say NHL stuff, but I don't see any NHL guests or hockey anything. Just besides the logo, so I'm curious about that. I mean, I guess I'm excited, or I I would go just to see it, but. Who knows? Maybe Never I'm a bad wrong. time in New York City either. It's a yeah. city I love going to. Yeah, for sure. All right, last story in our epic kind of hobby news today. Uh, Jack Hughes. Uh, right as our last show was published, Troy, it was announced mm-hmm. the Devil Superstar would have season-ending shoulder surgery. Not that there's much of a season left for the Devils, whose 2023-24 uh, is not gone as planned, for sure. With just one game left, the Devils are 38, 38, and 5, will not participate in the playoffs after advancing to the second round last year. So that's a disappointment. Hughes has dealt with upper body injuries throughout the season, has already missed 16 games. I think we'll end up missing 20 total as a result. 
So with the team out of the playoffs, seems like the decision was made to shut him down, get his shoulder fixed, which I'm sure is the upper body injury that's been ailing mm-hmm. him all year. So he's ready for the start of training camp for next season. Hughes will finish the 2023-24 campaign with 27 goals, 47 assists for 74 points and 62 games played. So still very productive when he's been on the ice. Uh, and this was coming off of last year where he's able to play 78 games, produce 43 goals and 99 points. Here's my concern with this guy, Troy. I'm going to mm-hmm. go through his five full seasons. We're going to look at games played each year. In 2019, he played 61 games. 2020 was COVID 56. So I'm pretty sure that's about the whole year. So you got to give him credit for that. 2021, just 49 games. Then last year he played 78, like we just talked about, and then now 62 games this year. I don't know how you can't be somewhat concerned about his, if you're, if anything on this guy, just his ability to make it through a season. Yeah, what do you it's, think uh, it's definitely worrisome. And again, he's not the biggest guy, right? This is what I always no, get worried about. Sl- slight. Slight, and this is always the stuff. And his shoulders, shoulders are... They can always be there. <laughs> they can be nagging and nagging and nagging. So that that's worrisome to me. I would definitely be worried because you can't what was have a big injury half. before. Was it shoulder again too? I was. <laughs> we were on the same way, Link. I was just looking it up. Um, I'll find it. Keep talking. <laughs> Jack Hughes, 2019 Young Guns, PSA 10, pop 4,982, very close to 5,000. 75% gem rate, less over 190 US dollars on April 12th. It is down 9% in the past two weeks and 14% in the past month. Okay. I got I got our timeline for our boy, Jack Hughes. So 2019-20 was lower body and then an upper body injury. Yep, 21-22 was COVID. Then it was a knee and then a shoulder. 22-23 was upper body, probably shoulder. 23-24 was shoulder and then upper body. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking. I yeah, use that one site. I love it. That in NHL injury viz.blogspot.com. Fantastic injury site. It's a really concise name, too. So that's great. Just, <laughs> no, well, any, I, I almost thought it was fake because Blogspot, that was Blogger. Blogspot. That was old Google, old Google blogging platform. Remember when that was a thing? Mm-hmm. And you went out and just like, today I did. It's like an online diary. Yeah. Hopefully th- this takes care of it. And I think oh. it's a good move to shut him down and get <laughs> the about young guns. Here it is. Anyway, yeah, about six it. minutes ago. So oh, sure. there it is. All right. Sorry, YouTuber. YouTubers are getting screwed today. I've been slow on stuff. Sorry about that. Well, you were looking it up. So I kind of set you were set up to fail there. <laughs> well, Troy. All right. Let's fun do it. facts part do. I made you a, a photo. Do you like it? Like it. I like it. It's it's very 80s, 90-ish. I probably I'm like gonna more get 80s. something that would like more your vibe and something yeah, new and... I like it. All right. Well, I'm gonna I like it. Pass the conch to you and let you write right. fun facts. Here we go. We're gonna fly through this will be fast, it's not gonna be long, but okay. love fun facts and got good feedback from the last time. A lot of these are from NHL PR's Instagram account. It's fantastic. Follow it. They should they almost there is it's like information overload. There's too much stuff that they send out. Yeah. It's amazing the stuff they can select or find. So I selected a bunch of stories and we'll get into card values on some of them just for a little fun. So let's go. Here we go. First one, Josh. Okay. On Saturday, Brad Marchand, the rat, moved into a tie for eighth place all time on the NHL shorthanded goals list in a career with 36. I think I love this because it sums him up. He's a pest, right? Pest, 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 and especially shorthanded. I didn't know Gretzky. I guess it makes sense. Gretzky would be in the lead, but eighth all time. No, no, I don't think it does because I was just again we're 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 on the same wavelength. Um, I was going to make a really bad analogy, but I won't. The well, like modern superstars don't play on the penalty kill. Yeah. So, like, when is Austin Matthews going to score a shorthand goal? <laughs> That's true. Right? Or, but Marshawn, or he's, just, he's, a little, he's a little pest out there. Mm-hmm. I I will never like him because some of the stuff he does is just ridiculous, like licking people. <laughs> like that that was when I think I was done with him. But he's he is a good player. Just his personality is something else. 
All right, Marchand is a 2009 Young Guns Josh. PSA 10 pop, 170. Oops, sorry about this, YouTube people. Really tiny. Gem rate, 34%. Last sale I could find was eBay. And verified Terra Peak was for 305 US dollars on January 11th of this year. In October, there were a couple of sales around 320 US dollars. So There's too much going on for me in that this Young Guns design. Young I Guns think, are... what do you like better, 2008 with like the Stamkos, Ooh. like, House of Horrors, like <laughs> the Iron Gate, Gate Iron Gate style, or this where there's it's like they tried too hard to be cool. Yeah, I think I like the Gate better. I I don't like the incomplete Young Guns mm-hmm. text. It just seems a little odd. But okay, second one, Josh. I mentioned this one. I've kind of alluded to it. The Eastern Conference's second wild card spot changed hands three times in the span of forty nine minutes. On Saturday, April 13th, the Penguins held the spot when they started play on Saturday, but then the Flyers took it, and finally the Capitals held it at the end of the day. I thought that was absolutely crazy. I love that it's playoff time. There's tied teams. Detroit's also in this little mix here. It's going to be just fun to watch, and I'm I'm really – I'm actually – excited when we get done with the show i can actually go look and see what's happened with all these games and who's who's where well i'll give you an update oh right now from espn so in the driver's seat for the second wild card as of this minute are the capitals 87 okay detroit has 87 points so tiebreaker they're out of it as of right now the flyers have 87 points same situation Our, our third and then Finally, Pittsburgh has 86 points. So it looks like we have four teams solidly buy, or buying for the second wild card between the Capitals, Red Wings, Flyers, and Penguins. Which team would you, would your, if you got to choose, oh, I'm going, just you the team I'm you going. wanted? You're going to, you're so in love. I'm going with Pittsburgh. <laughs> Are you going to get an apartment with Crosby? And just like, do I have to we're gonna worry? Are you gonna start a podcast with him? And I'm gonna be... <laughs> we're gonna reminisce about Shattuck. Uh, As time with Shattuck, same area. So again, love this stat. Little little fun, little fun one. No, no card stuff for this one, just fun stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh, Josh, you mentioned him. You speak him, he will come to truth. Here we go. We got lots for Sidney Crosby. So on Friday, Crosby hit 1,000 assists, which is 14th all time. But also, which this graphic is showing for our YouTube video, video ugh, viewers, puts him at seventh all time for a career assist with a single NHL franchise. Huh. Pretty cool. Also, Josh, on Friday, Crosby moved into the 10th spot for career points. He now has 1,592 as of the day I did this. On Saturday, Josh, Sidney Crosby moved into a tie for seventh place all time with Ovi and Gretzky, which our YouTube viewers can see on the graphic, on the NHL most points in a season at age 36 or older. Mm. Our boy, and I, I, it, you know, we watch Spin or I watch Spin Checkers, you watch Spin Checkers, we, we listen yeah. to them. Whitney, or Ryan Witt, Whitney, is he Whitney's last name? Yeah, Ryan Whitney. He basically did a make hoopla or whatever they call it. Like, I come to Jesus moment and apologize to Crosby because he was like, I said this guy was washed up. Pittsburgh's never going to do anything. And he like basically just came out and apologized. So it's, I'll let him speak for me. But yeah, Crosby, it's been pretty amazing what's going on with him. So I saw something really cool about his 1,000th assist the other day. Ooh, what was that? If you go to NHL.com's Instagram, they post so much. It's like buried. They list every goal scorer he has assisted. Oh, I did. I think I did see that. There's some kind of surprises on here. So, was um, it like 190 summers? I can't remember the actual number. Um, I don't remember how many. Who, who do you think he has assisted the most? Kind of an easy one. Latang? No, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Don't say it's easy now. I'm just doubting myself. I You're going to be mad at yourself. It's, it's a guy you can't say his name. Oh, Malkin? Yeah. 138. Ev- Evgeny. Evgeny. There, I got Evgeny. it. Yeah, usually Bale and Colin. And then Gensel's second. How many times has he did he assist Mario Lemieux? Ooh. 
I know they uh, 30. One. One. Oh, wow. Way, that way that really surprised me. That, that's the entire <laughs> reason why I brought this up because it's like one time. One. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it's just crazy. That's a great fun fact. All right. Here he is. Way too big. Crosby's a 2005 Young Guns. We've talked about this card way too much. His most recent sale find was on April 14th this year. Obviously, 2024 on eBay. Verified and Terra Peak for two thousand six hundred US dollars in October twenty twenty three. Started the NHL season, it was going around two thousand five hundred US dollars. So pretty much, Crosby's career is baked into his cards. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the what the catalyst is. Maybe keep playing well into age forty. I guess who knows? The guy is pretty amazing. Okay, I just thought this was neat. With their win on Saturday, the New York Rangers set a franchise record with most wins in a single season with fifty four. That kind of surprised me. 54 seemed low <laughs> for a franchise record for them for how long they've been around. And especially when you had, what, six teams in the league? If you're super good, you just they didn't play that many games, I guess. You know like, what the all-time record is? Because I know, like, in basketball, the Bulls had 72 it, wins. I thought it was 70, isn't it? That's incredible. It was in Detroit. All-time wins season team. I'm looking it up right now. Oh, no. no, no we're such idiots. It was last year. The Bruins. No, that's oh yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah. It was the Bruins, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're... Most wins season at NHL sixty five. The Bruins, Detroit had sixty two and ninety five, ninety six. We're super we intelligent. Go. We are super intelligent. <laughs> okay. Oh, I got to mention one oh. thing though about oh. go back to the Rangers. Don't read that, people. We <laughs> get knocked from time to time. I think legitimately because we yes. hardly ever talk about the Rangers. Yeah, and I've actually thought about like why do we never talk? They have. They just don't have any, like, there's not a lot of hobby excitement going on there, which is surprising because it's an original six team. It's in New York City. You got great players, like, but Panarin's one of those guys, again, that nobody cares about. Yeah. And Laffey has been trending better, but not great. And Chesty's a goalie. So maybe that's their, Adam Fox but, is kind of like poor man's Kale McCart. But even Kreider, Kreider's had some moments where he was. Oh, Kreider had like 50 goals when you're yeah. like high 40s or something like that. Yeah, yeah he's a. Uh... It's a, it's pretty nuts how. But maybe we should try to talk about the Rangers more. <laughs> we'll set a goal. N- know your audience. Well, if we knew if we did that, we'd talk about Toronto, Calgary, <laughs> Wild, and probably the Rangers. That would be our whole show because that's where most of our listeners are. It's time for okay. our Calgary update. Okay. <laughs> time for Calgary. All right, this one, the one I on Friday, Philippe Forsberg scores his 44th goal of the season and passed Matt Duchesne for sole possession of the most goals in a regular season. In Predators franchise history, Josh. Wow. What was your favorite Predators Matt Duchesne moment? I don't have one. And do you notice if you if you're as an astute observer, do you see who's in this picture? Brian O'Reilly. You got O'Reilly, Betty. He's right there. Number 90. Yeah. All right. Forsberg. We talked about this card recently, too. It's kind of funny. 2013 Young Guns, PSA 10 pop, 174. Gem rate 73%. Reason set on eBay verified in Terra Peak on April 13th, 2024 was 110 US dollars. In October, Josh, this card was going around 60 US dollars. But again, not a lot of sales. I mean, there might be four to five sales between that October and the most recent one. Oh. So I'll take that for what it is. Okay, Josh. Last fun fact. This is my favorite one. The hat tricks of hat tricks. On Tuesday, April 9th. Nathan McKinnon, Steven Stamkos, and Juraj Slavkovsky each scored a hat trick. This is the first time that three first overall draft picks have scored a hat trick on the same day in NHL history. I love this. <laughs> I love that someone thought of this or how they figured it out, but it is great. Well, you ended it with the bank, right? That is. Yeah, and I'm an idiot amazing. that I didn't write anything about their young guns, but don't worry. I included pictures. If you want to see it, here's McKinnon's. Oh, yeah. Uh, here's Stamkos. We've already talked about that today. Yeah, see, see, here's the Iron Gate. And there's our boy, Slavkowski. Hey, Slav Sharks, look at that. So, sorry about that. All right, awesome. Can't wait for part three. Part, <laughs> this is part two. I, uh, I don't know. What is trois? Is that three? Well, French? I know uno, dos, tres, tres quatro. That's tres. Spanish. So, yeah, tres. Part- Must be French. All right, I got to make a quick 
mention for Gong Show Partner and Sponsor uh, PWCC. We are very, very thankful to them for their support of this show. The April premiere auction ends this upcoming Thursday, April 18th. All six hockey cards in the auction are iconic. Yes. And you def- these are cards you do not see up for sale every day. So be sure to uh, get your bids in before it's too late. Uh, went through another flop. <laughs> that McDavid flop is pretty awesome. This one keeps going up a little. Is it, or has it always been at 20,500? Mm, don't know. I feel like... So we decided that which one would you pick if you got to choose? I would pick the, I think the Future Rush Auto Pack. Or the Lemieux. I've always wanted Lemieux rookie. You're on mute. Man, I was gonna say you want my. I got a. I got two Lemmy rookies. Yeah, you just have like markers on them. Yeah, they're like from when I was a kid, so they're probably PSA twos, <laughs> and they're tops too. Also, be sure to check out the fixed price marketplace as well. Over fifty four hundred hockey cards to choose from. New cards are added each day, and then Troy, there's the weekly. Every week, Troy, there's a weekly auction. Hence the name mm-hmm. weekly auction. That's why they call it that which you can find awesome hockey cards as well. Over 300 hockey cards in the current PWCC Weekly. Some absolute bangers. You are Troy, and I'm Josh. We're going to pick out our favorite vintage and modern cards, highlight them on Thursday show. And then after our one-week hiatus, Jeremy Lee and I will be back this upcoming Sunday night. Jeremy's YouTube channel, Sports Cards Live, for our weekly PWCC Hockey Watch Party starting at 8.30. I am just going to say... When the show drops, the the next PWCC one that's live, that is silly. That McDavid, you see that on my screen? Holy cow. Okay, preview time. (laughs) New products. New product releases. So tomorrow, which is Monday, or today, uh, whatever space-time continuum we're in here. (laughs) Tomorrow for us, today for you, Tim Horton's Duos releases. All across Canada. In about every 47 meters, you see how I use <laughs> the Imperials. You'll find a Tim Hortons. You should be able to pick up some of these packs today. Newest Timmy's release, 2023 yeah. 24 Upper Deck Greatest Duos. Could not find any official checklist or anything online. I actually looked a lot. It was Oh, really? Yeah, it's almost did like you, there needs to be a new checklist site. Somewhere. Did you uh, Did you try Cardboard Connection? No. <laughs> Shots fired? What? Too soon? Yeah. There's videos of people opening these. Upper deck had a video. There's just no checklist with photos. So it's all the duos, right? Two players, mm-hmm. I think, on each card. So I actually don't know a lot. Of, there is a commercial. It's pretty funny with the Chuck Bros. Even Daddy Boy Keith makes a uh, <laughs> appearance. Yeah, so don't really have a lot to say. Just other than Timmy's are uh, for sale today. Greatest duos. And uh, save some for us when we're there next week. Because yep. we're going to be buying some. But I did find info, Troy, on the 2024 Spring Expo Wrapper Redemption List and Checklist Overview right, from Upper Deck. So Upper Deck published the products that they'll be offering free packs. We need to redeem the box wrappers or unsealed yep. cases for in a couple weeks here at the Expo. Here's a look at the products. So for hobby boxes, there are six options. Series 2, no surprise. Get some Betsy Young Guns and some free packs. 2022-23 credentials. Yeah, 2022-23 clear cut <laughs> Parker's yep. champions. Yep. Right. That's a bit. Uh, 2022-23 ice, and then 2022-23 OPG platinum. So they're so really it, trying to prop up the 2022-23 yeah. boxes. Would credentials be the cheapest out of those? Clear cut. Clear cut. Sorry, clear cut. Or ice, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Just any 22-23. I like Parker's is in there. Well, just wait, Troy. Just wait. I, oh, no, I, I, I would like, I'm going to ask you to reserve your judgment till the end here. Oh no! What happened? We have to. We have to talk about this. Oh. So here's what happens when you buy a box from an Upper Deck certified diamond dealer. So at the show at in their booths, they'll typically have a gold balloon flying overhead. Mm-hmm. You buy the box from them. It has to be one of these six boxes. You take said box to the Upper Deck booth. They take a knife and they cut the box. They don't cut you. And they remove the plastic wrapper, and then they give you one of their Spring Expo Redemption packs. If you buy cases, which yep. and the cases are the exact same products, and they the, what they'll do, they there's case 
the brown boxes are not wrapped in shrink wrapped. They just unseal them. And then you get 10 spring expo redemption packs and then one randomly selected auto card. Okay. Pretty much the same program I predicts done ever since we started going to the expo. Yeah. The checklist is out as well. So in the spring expo redemption packs, there's a few different card types. So you get a pack. I don't know how many cards are in each pack. I don't know if it says there, but there's victory stars cards, which are 32 players, all current NHL stars. Okay. Right. So they'd be your OVs and like Kachuk here. Then there's, you can get victory black rookies. There's eight rookies on the checklist. Matt Savoy. I see what you're saying. John Beecher. Mm. Who? Connor Zeri, Simon Nemec, Frazier Minton, Kristen Lundow, oh. Pavel Minchukov, Isaac Rosen. No Bezzy, Troy. Not there. No Connor Bernard. Interesting. Which is interesting because they put him everywhere, but not in these packs. You can also get, just like last year, there's AEW because Upper Deck has the AEW yep. agreement. No, they put there's six wrestlers on the checklist as well. And then finally, in these redemption packs, you can get like there's 28 player autos, but they're pretty much all secondary stars. So if you look at the checklist, there's nobody that you're going to do cartwheels over. It's names like. Oh, gosh, I'm I'm trying to go with the time. It's like all like. Not super exciting. Yeah. So, lastly, if you get a case, I mentioned you'll get one random Perkhurst Priority Signings exclusives. Yep. These are the bigger names. So, to get a good auto card, you have to buy a case. Yep. There is a Bedard auto out of five. Yep, it's on the screen for YouTubers. Yep. Then there's players like Ovi, McDavid, Elias Pettison, Brady Kachuk. Most of the autos for the the big guys are out of five or out of 15. Bedard is out of five. Then there's two dual auto cards. There's Matthew and Marner out of two. Miko Rantanen and Makar out of four. There's no Legends, no Gretzkys, no Ors, anything like that. And, yeah, if you go to, like I said, the so the packs are fine. Yes. But, but there's no... I don't know if there's a hundred dollar card in any of the packs. Yeah, that's that stinks that the good autos basically are in the cases. And mm-hmm. so I'm probably out because I usually don't buy cases <laughs> at the expo or anything. unless we split a case or something like that. Oh yeah, maybe Parker Champions or something. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or maybe we get so, crazy. Get crazy, Trey. Let's go. <laughs> Kids don't need to go to college. <laughs> so no, screw that. All right. So so does that kind uh, of bum me out a little bit, or a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just weird to me that it's like you put Bedard in every National Hockey Card Day pack almost, and you wouldn't put him in the well. Actually, you know, it just very much reeks of, and reeks is like too strong a word. I don't mean it to be like negative, but they're. I should say maybe. They're very obviously trying to help the 2022 23 sets. Yeah. Because they're, uh, with the exception of Series 2, it's all that year's product. And then they're putting the good cards in cases. It, you know, if you, so they're trying to really encourage you to buy a case of, but I mean, who wants a case of like 2022 23 <laughs> credentials? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. All right. Boo. I'm sad. All right, man. We got to go to mailbag. All right, gone from Mailbag. Lots of questions. Lots yes. of good ones. Uh, you did a lot of work on one of these. It's like you did like a Yeah, I did too much work because there's no way I can like read it off and sh- I'll just talk about it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I had PTSD after reading it. Was, it. it was, I was up way too late doing that. All right. First question Gong Show Discord, M Miller 20910. He says this might be a topic for a show post playoffs. What do you see as opportunities for buying and selling in the offseason? I ramped up my buying and selling last July, and looking back, it was a great time to buy and a terrible time to sell. Sales picked up the first few weeks of the regular season, improved more around the all-star break, and continued to gain momentum with the playoffs arising. During the playoffs, would you resist temptation to buy the hot player or team? 
generally, yes. This will be a topic for the <laughs> at the end of the playoffs, probably near the end of the playoffs. We'll go into it again. We always like to say off season is a buying season, unless last year you were looking for Cole Caulfield, who for some reason decided <laughs> to just go run away and increase values. But yeah, it the, the the premise around the question is very good thoughts, and we will kind of get into that. There's going to be guys in the next month that go mm-hmm. bananas and we're all going to get super excited about. And like, I think we talked about maybe in a, uh, within the last handful of shows, if it's like an out of five grail type card, you may have to pony up and buy yep. it. But any commodity type card resist which yes. like a young guns yep. and get it in the off season. You're right. Caulfield was the exception last year and Bedard will be the exception this summer. Yep. Yep. Because you're going to have sets coming out and like sp authentic and it's gonna go bonkers yeah all right discord ct hockey 913 could you tell us about this is the one electric ice cards yeah i see some upper deck cards have the stamp regular than gold and it seems to have been done across different years do we know how common they were in packs and i'm actually i haven't read yours but i've seen these cards too and i and i think they're kind of cool so i'm curious to see what you came up with well, okay, here's here's what I did. I like you said, I've seen these. I definitely seen these cards and I've just never really thought about them like an idiot, but so I'm like, well, I better go I'm going to go down the rabbit hole, so I did. And I started going, I started to find I wanted to find what the first year was that we did these or that upper deck or whoever did the electric ice. It was upper deck. They first came out as a parallel in 1994-95 upper deck hockey. There was a 570 card parallel set. Number one through 270 were inserted one in every 35 series one packs. And then 271 to 570 were inserted in one every 35 series two packs. I don't think he wanted to know about these old ones, but I'll just say it. And then in 95, 96. I just can't get over 570 card parallel set. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's nuts. And then 95, 96 upper deck. So the next year they have electric ice, but then they also have electric ice gold parallels. Again, 500 card set. However, Electric Ice, the normal parallel, was now inserted one in every retail pack. Mm -hmm. And the Electric Ice Gold was, again, 575 cards. The Series 1 ones through 1 to 270 was one in 35 Series 1 retail packs. So I got this is where I've said I dig when there's a cool thing in retail that's only a retail exclusive. And then 271 through 570 of the Gold Electric Ice were inserted one in every 27 series two retail packs and they substituted for the regular electric ice in any pack where it's found. Great. That's kind of the history. Yeah. Now, now we get to the ones you've probably been seeing recently. So yes. I, here's how I'm going to say it. Basically in 2020, 21 upper deck, there's a 2005 06 upper deck tribute electric ice achievement and when I first started reading it, it's labeled as a mail-in set. I'm like, what is going on? It's EPAC. It, it, it's an EPAC thing. And I believe it's all. In, it's only an extended series because I started looking at EPAC. And I started going through Series 1, Series 2. I'm like, where are these things? And then I found them in an extended series. And so we'll go back 2021, 2020, 2021 Upper Deck, this Electric Ice 2005-06 tribute set. There's seven cards. Okay. And Josh, I'm going to, we're going to go over this one because just here's what you have to do to get these cards. If you want the Patrick Kane, you got to redeem a complete rookie class SC set. So 45 total cards. Then you get the Patty Kane. If you want the Nathan McKinnon, you got to redeem a complete 2005 06 upper deck set, including Young Guns, 100 total cards to receive <laughs> the Nathan McKinnon. If you want to redeem a complete Dazzler Blue, or to get the Connor McDavid, you got to redeem a complete Dazzler Blue set, which is 50 cards, to, to receive that. So that's three of them. You want the Crosby, you got to redeem complete Ultimate Victory, Ultimate Victory Rookies, and McDavid MMXXI sets, if you remember those. 55 total cards. Then you get Crosby. You want Matthews, you got to redeem a complete Ovation set, 50 total cards. Okay, can I stop you there? Because yeah. I was just curious. So as you're talking, I went. I logged into Card Ladder. the The last sale of a it's a raw. They're not a lot, right? It's gonna be low. five bucks for the Austin. Yep. Think this of is somebody it, this that. Is, yes. Holy moly! This like, is all I get to. This seems like a lot of work for not a lot of payoff. Maybe there's some other cards I just don't know about. 
You redeem a if you want the Laffy in 2020, 2021. Redeem a complete Electric Ice Achievement set. So six total cards to receive the Electric Ice Achievement of Laffy. So now you can start redeeming these cards that you worked all that time to get. And then if you want Stutzla, you redeem a complete Upper Deck Triple Dimensions Reflection set, which is 50 total cards. Okay, I just went through one way to do that one year. There's also 2122. There's Upper Deck Ice Achievements. I'm not going to read all of them again. And then in 22, 23, there's electric ice achievements. They are all just as crazy for what you have to do to get them. But if you want to see, go to EPAC. The last two years, 21 and 21, 22 and 22, 23, there's still packs available or boxes. So you can find, go to the achievements and you'll find these in extended series. So go to those EPAC sites if you want to see kind of what these electric ice achievements are it is bonkers and then did you know about the mastery achievements i had no clue no. go read about those that's the next one to go read about same kind of thing tons of redemptions to get these mastery cards i mean this is where our knowledge i think i'm gonna speak for you but tell me if i'm wrong our knowledge of epac is severely lacking and this is one area where i just was yeah. like wow I just so feel like with EPAC, like they're like I really like these electric ice cards, but it's so obvious the hobby doesn't like I was the Stutzel one. It's yeah. the tribute, the 05 tribute. It looks I like it. Yeah. Last two sales and auction are for five bucks. Was there any graded? Have you found any graded ones? Yeah, like one for like 150, but there's only been 17 sales of it total. Yeah. I'm mean, just talking about the Stutzel, so these are not super common. I mean, I wonder if this is just like, I mean, there's a handful of like whales that really love chasing these and putting all the sets together. And well, I want to find it because <laughs> then I want to like buy it now and they want like 20 bucks for them. Yeah. So it, it's like maybe I'll do a safe search for to try to find what, one at auction. And uh, well, this like would be something, it. this would be something that we look out for at the expo. And if we see it in a booth, maybe ask the person how they came about it. You have such fantastic ideas. <laughs> I thought you were mad at me because I saw your finger and it was all big because you're in front of your camera. No, I was, I was like, what happy. did I do? I'm not on mute. I know I'm not on mute. Um, in general, though, you don't need to spend four hours answering a question. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm, <laughs> but holy yeah, cow, should, that was yeah. I, went, I listed out every card for all those sets, every, and anyway, I'll be honest, it's like copy paste, just so I. But I don't want to read them all. It's it's you can find it. TCDB has it, and Upper Deck Pack site has it. Discord, right. just hockey cards. And the new Parker's oh, champion set. Nope, I'm going to go back. I'm an idiot. Guess what I had a picture of? What? Back back to Electric Ice. Here's the site, like 21, 22, Upper Deck Extended Series. Here's the Electric Ice cards you can get and hit the view details. You can see it. Oh, so How many of those got, can still be redeemed? So it looks like the ones that aren't grayed out, I think, are, can still be redeemed. So it looks like all of them from 21, 22. Hmm. But here's Josh. Where did I find those? Uh, you got to go find, look for mastery sets. Maybe they weren't in this one. I can't remember, but it's just another bonkers thing. Anyways. I put these like EPAC achievement cards almost in the same class as bounty cards, where I think they're hmm. inherently cool, but I just don't know how. I just think that you end up spending like $10,000 for a card that's worth 32 bucks, maybe yeah. three years down the road. All right, now Discord just hockey cards. Okay. The new Parker's Champion set. All the inserts and parallels have the name of the card in the top right corner on the back, except some of the rainbow parallels that are missing their rainbow designation. Yep. Why is this? Is this an oversight by Upper Deck? Am I missing something? I think it's a question that we ask one of them or <laughs> next time we talk to them. But I had I saw the same thing. I actually messaged a group chat I'm in. I said, "Hey, I have rainbows, but only one or like." Some of them have the name on the back. Is am I yeah. missing something? And I don't think I am. I think they just forgot to put the name on, or they had a printing error or something. That's what I'm chalking it up to. Tell somebody. I think it's an oversight too. Yeah. Instagram, go for fan ninety. Where's a good place to buy 1980s rookie graded cards online, or is it, mm. or is raw better for PC? There's lots of places. eBay, uh, my card post, or uh, one of our sponsors, Slab Sharks. You know, well, is getting more and more. Vintage cards, a PWCC fixed price marketplace, lots of vintage cards in their auction. And so tons of 
There's tons of places to go for fan. Now, if you're yeah. saying is raw better for PC, and it's just a personal preference, whatever you like. The one thing I will say though about you have to be very careful buying raw cards online. You have to make sure there's really good photos. I yeah. prefer actually buying raw cards in person. Yeah. And it, so I can give it a good thorough inspection. But yeah, I personally, if you personally, I dig ungraded raw cards. I I think I like those a little better. And if they're for my pure my PC, if it's for my PC, I'll save the money and buy it raw. <laughs> Not even worry about it because I'm never going to sell it. But it is nice to have if you want it protected, it could be in a case or whatever. The slab is nice for that too. Discord rally sc. It's a great I love question. It. I, I love this question. What do you guys think of breakers putting a sticker with their logo over the top loader? When they ship you your cards, I got to say, I find it a bit irritating. First off, they're my cards. Second, if I'm taking a picture of the card, I don't want it there. Third, they're tough to get off and sometimes leave a ton of gunk on the Mm -hmm. top loader. This isn't a huge deal. I love my breakers, but I wanted to know if I'm alone in this. I will say great question. I don't think you're alone. I, but I do understand a breaker putting their sticker on with their branding, right? Yep. As sort of their advertisement. And all, I think Upper Deck does this too as well. If you get redemptions from them, I think they come with a little Upper Deck sticker on them also. So it, it's not unprecedented. It is obviously something. So I get I get it from 100% that standpoint that they're advertising. However, I agree with your points on why it can be irritating as all get out. The If the sticker is too sticky and it leaves gunk, I hate. I just hate that. It's like the tape. Like I would like something with the consistency of like painter's tape rather than scotch tape. Yeah where you can't get those things off. So from that standpoint, I agree. Um, I guess it doesn't bother me enough that I'm going to tell a breaker to stop doing it. I, I get it. It's branding. They're advertising. They want to take the picture on their stream or something and post it on Instagram. And they want they you want, to take the picture. Yeah, and, or they want you to take the picture and they want that advertising. So I get it, but I get the annoying part. I think if any breaker is going to do those stickers, make sure they're easy to get off. Like UPS, the little the little label that has it's the tiny rectangle with your address. Those things are super easy to pull. Something like that consistently. Now the big ones on UPS packages are ridiculous, but mm-hmm. that's what I would say. All right, next question is from YouTube WC three four two six. Great question. Is it wise to have card auctions end while the Toronto Sport Card Expo is going on? Well. I would say in general, no, Yeah. but you have to balance it. This, the spring one with what's going on during the playoffs. Playoffs. If, if it's the start of a playoff series, like I don't, I haven't looked at the dates to, but if like round two is starting during the expo, I, I think we're still in round one by then, but you know, then I, I would say the playoffs outweigh the expo, but all, so if, it, if it's a guy like Cole Caulfield, who's not going to be in the playoffs, I would not, I would wait. Until after the expo stuff, mm-hmm. agree. agree it's that. uh, and again, it's that anecdotal evidence where we think there's always a little dip, but it is interesting with this one. You got the playoffs, also. You're trying to, and plus, me, I just don't pay attention. Like, I'm at the expo, I would forget I bid on something or forget to watch it. Okay, next question Instagram, it's freaking Polly. What are Polly? your thoughts on Beckett's new pricing change and return times? I think overall, it's a good move. <laughs> Josh, explain to me because <laughs> I don't know. The first good move in a while. On. Well, here you've you got yep. it loaded. Yeah, we got this. They basically just lowered some of their okay. pricing, and I think uh, shortened their turnaround times a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, it, everything. This is like the first, honestly, the first thing in like two years they've done where I, my instant reaction hasn't been immediately. That's so weird. It's like they've been doing lots of grading announcements. They have like a new director of grading. And I don't know if you saw this like a week ago, he <laughs> did this whole video announcement that they weren't going to change. It, so it's basically, it's like our big announcement is we're not going to, we're no longer going to change our grading just, scale. So we're going to yeah. keep things. I, I just um, I don't, it, it's like they're allergic to doing anything smart. Just simplify it. Get rid of all this BS. Just simplify it. I know sports cars nonsense. Mike, Geo had a good rant where he just went off on Beckett and he's right. What he said, use your subgrades and use and price. it so amazingly cheap that almost people are forced to use you and lose money. 
<laughs> like, that's what he was saying. Because they're so far behind now on market share. that uh, It's just, it's amazing. I just, it's still, I look at this still and I go, it's still too confusing to me. You know what I saw that I think is new that really bummed me out, Troy? It's not back. And so SGC now for their standard like value, they now have a declared max value. Stupid. I hate that's and P- that's, that's the whole PSA, PSA all over it. Yep, that's yep. PSA all over it. Stupid. Yeah, so I, it's it's a good move. Hopefully Beckett not rooting against them. Hopefully they can make a little bit of a comeback. That would be nice. Uh, next question. I had never even realized this. It's from All for the Hobby. Uh, good breaker. And definitely check him out. I think he's on Whatnot and has his own website. Why doesn't McDavid have any inscribed Future Watch autos? He does not because I went. I had no idea either. Oh, we suck. I, I asked. I, I reached out to Upper Deck. I haven't heard back. Okay. I honestly, I honestly don't know. We got to be a little bit careful too because people know that we have a little bit of a pipe. I mean, not like a, you know, but believe me, they might get back. We, to we us. can't. It's we not can't like they ask. respond every time. They'll be like, we, oh, we can't ask right. him four hundred questions a week, yeah. and so we we try to be judicious in how we do that. But this is one I would love to know the answer and especially because he was like their title spot or like yeah. one of their like their big sponsor guys so i'm sure there's a story there and someday i hope to get it i mean i didn't look up but was it a thing in 2005 yeah miko ranton has or sorry them. 2015 oh. it was i'm dumb yep. Never mind. yeah yeah i got crosby thing. and ovechkin on my head i'm 2005 everything you and your crosby thing okay my favorite question from instagram oh, Neil. Irish Flyers collector. <laughs> How do I set up a button bar for a podcast? Asking for a friend. Look at this, Neil. Look at that it. is a fantastic question. Troy, yeah, since you have in. so much experience oh. in this area, I'll, I'll let you. Uh... It's plugged in. You can see the screens are kind of on. The little buttons are on. I just haven't set it up. I'm sorry. I just. It's a bad time of the year. Work, expo, taxes, all that stuff. I'll get to it. If you ever meet us someday and want to buy us a beer and <laughs> ask us about our, our both of our taxes meltdown, and, uh, <laughs> we'll have a great story to tell you. <laughs> okay. Instagram, McCleb Hockey Cards. Uh, this is kind of an interesting question to ponder. From your opinion, what was the total revenue of Upper Deck with hockey cards last year? Uh, this is going to be a wild guess, McCleb, because Upper Deck is a privately held company. I believe They don't tell you how many... 16 bit cards are made. They're not going to tell you their revenue. So <laughs> I'm just going to, we're, we're both going to guess, Troy. And I just want to see how close our guesses are. I'm going to say that they made 128, 25 million on hockey and then like an incremental 25 million on like Marvel and AEW and all that stuff for a total of 150 million. But I think they have like 80 or some employees. So that just feels like, you know, they're not going to be a billion dollar company with 80 employees. Well, it's kind of funny because I've actually looked this up. And you can find, well, it's it's all these sites that take guesses, right? Like, like Dun and Brad Street or something. Like yes, that. they all take these wild guesses. And I remember the revenue number has always been between one hundred and twenty and one hundred and fifty total. Oh, really? But employees, they gotta have more than eighty. Like I'm seeing like five hundred. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. But maybe it, you could be right. Maybe it, these sites, you never know what gibberish they're pulling i just from. feel like upper deck is like largely a product development company yeah right that and they outsource their production now they mentioned like they have like their patch facility in in some carolina right so i don't you, know how many people work there and you want you want to know how to back into the employees uh linkedin just linkedin yeah. you'll get ballpark you'll probably be within 70 to 80 percent but when my guess for revenue employees i thought you're gonna like go to their parking <laughs> lot and just like no. rent the car and smash no, the no, no i'm gonna stand out there and count one to no uh revenue i don't have that little hand clicker as people like the the pitch count thing or when the people walk by click 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 um revenue i've always i mean the 150 million seems fine i have no idea though but at one point in my life i thought upper deck was like a billion dollar company i don't know why i just thought that and maybe they are and we're the idiots that we don't know you should buy a try yeah we can we can ruin it together Instagram, is it Geppetto or Geppetto? I want to say Geppetto. I like that. I would Sorry. say Geppetto cards. Okay. He says favorite between 0305 and 09 tributes. So I'm assuming okay. he's talking about Future Watch Autos. 
And I'm gonna, I'm not, you know, I, I dog on all the 05 designs, but the 05 Future Watch Auto has grown on me more and more. And it is one of my favorite. It's so simple and clean. You got the Troy's, uh, you know, man crush, Sidney Crosby. <laughs> and OB. Uh, so I'm going to say 05. Do you have a favorite of the three, Troy? I don't even know what the 03. <laughs> I don't even know what they look like. I miss this. Do they have three. Future Watch Autos in 03? I have no idea. I'm going to go with you and say 05. I'm sorry. I've haunted it. I missed this question. I didn't even see it. Twitter or X. I can't. I just can't drop Twitter. I My son now yells at me. He's like, it's X. I'm like, well, their Twitter.com still works. So you zip it. Okay. Can you explain this to me? So on Twitter, you would send a tweet. On X, <laughs> what do you send? A, a exit? <laughs> I don't know what you got. I don't know. John Ayafala. Do you know anything about 2019 SP Authentic Black Authentic Limited Gold Super Short Print Autos? The checklist says unannounced, which means Easter egg. Yeah. Hearing there are only five, but who knows? What I love about this, John, is that that's always the number people throw out is five. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? It, it's so tough to tell. Upper Deck would never release the information. I seem to think that there's a part of me that more and more that believes that they never do five of a card. That Because you have to think all these of all the cards that go in boxes, how many are left unopened? How many kids open a pack and throw the card away mm -hmm. right i i almost think like 25 or is more probably the minimum but that being said you look at like here's the jack hughes this is an awesome looking card yeah, great looking card i love gold amazing looking black card. love that only two sales of this so i don't know maybe mm. there's five but and i think that's part of the intrigue john is that you buy it no you know with that sort of being the question mark yep all right, next one. Twitter X, Sebastian Englehart. What are the most famous error cards in the hockey hobby? Do either of you have any cool error cards in your collection? I don't have any errors. I don't think you do either, Troy. None that I know of. <laughs> that I personally it's know It's kind of not our thing. Probably the most famous sport card would have to be the Billy Ripken F base from yes. 89 Fleer, right? That would be... Do you ever have any desire to own that card? Nope. I am not an errors person. I just... Error cards do nothing for me. If I get one just randomly, they're kind of kind of neat, but I don't think I'd ever go out of my way. Yeah, the one there's one you're gonna bring up is the one that I thought or that we both thought about. And I I know there's others. I'm actually looking at some right now on on I, I think there's another case of the example we have. So the one that that always comes to mind yeah. barely is the 1983-84 OPG Steve Larmer rookie yeah. that has the photo mixed up with Steve Ludzik, which kind of makes sense because they're both named Steve. Yeah. The two Steves. And they were both Blackhawks rookie or Blackhawks players. So and I think they're, they're, they're one number away, right? Were they like 28 and 20? Oh, maybe. So I can't more. remember, but I, I still, unless you're going to talk, we're going to talk about the value. No. The, the Steve Larmer name card with the wrong picture, I think sells for more than the Ludzik with actually Steve Larmer on it. <laughs> so which one do you consider his rookie? See, I I don't know. I it's neither. I I would lean towards <laughs> the name. So that's just, that's the one that yeah. I think the hobby does too. That's the one that sells more. I think. But this would be a, like a good case of like like that upper deck oopsie like the redo product the make pass wrongs right. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. up with like an actual like fixed Steve Arnold yeah. rookie. I love it. Okay, next question from Twitter X. Whales of the hobby. What do you think the likelihood is of a possible corporate merger between eBay mm. and Fanatics? The monopoly of all monopolies in the hobby world. <laughs> Seems consistent with Ruben's vision when listening to him when Fanatics acquired Tops. Yeah, he does. I mean, everything Ruben does, we saw with Fanatics like FanFest is uh, larger than life, right? Yep. I don't see them buying eBay because I, I think eBay is actually more valuable than Fanatics. And we forget too that eBay is like collectibles is a a part of the pie in eBay, and it's a huge company without collectibles. I'm not saying collectibles aren't significant to their revenue because I'm sure it is very significant, but but it's not just a collectibles business. Do you know what Fanatics is worth? Like what their market cap? I, I thought I thought like. Is it nine billion or thirty-five billion? So I'm like, okay. so Fanatics. Okay, I just looked it up. At December twenty-two, valued at thirty-one billion. And That's eBay, crazy. what's eBay's market cap? eBay's got to be over hundred billion, aren't they? No, twenty-eight 
26. Fanatics is bigger. Oh, wow. Okay, I was wrong. That's crazy. I don't know. Do you see Trevor? I, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me. I don't know how that makes it through any kind of government regulation without getting chopped yeah. up in some way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next inst- question. Instagram, slightly rounded. He says, you guys got to talk about the no pay situation mm. on the 7980. OBTK <laughs> is nuts. He's, and he asks, shill bidding gone wrong? So we did talk about it. Hopefully we covered it to your satisfaction. Now the shill bidding thing is that's interesting. I, I, but but I don't. I mean, I, I think he had the intention to buy it. So I don't know if it was. What if his buddy though know. was like the one selling? He's like, hey, shill, get this thing going. Like, get this, this is why get, the hobby needs underbidder. I know. <laughs> and Hold preferably on, at least Hold three on. sequels. Where is he? I gotta bring him up. There he is. <laughs> underbidder to the rescue. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think the, what it does point out for me is that this is a story to follow. I don't know if yes. we've heard the last of this one. No, I agree. Okay, lastly, Instagram cards age. With the playoffs just around the corner, expo season just starting up, how do you cope with the overwhelming existential drive <laughs> on by the relentless pursuit of profit and exploitation in an ultra-capitalist society? There you go. I love it. We always love to end the show on a happy note, Troy. Um, this is where we discuss, uh, like, Lenin or the, what's it, the Communist Neil Manifesto. Marcus. We're going to call Karl Marx, and then we'll also look at Milton Friedman and Mar- the free market and all that fun stuff. Like, Here's my economics. advice. Like, like, I actually stuff. have advice here, Troy. Okay. So to Cards AH and anyone else feeling the same, what I would tell you is to look up the Native American tale of the two wolves which talks about the inner con- an inner conflict that lives in one way or another within all of us. And, and it makes the, the metaphor of the battle of two wolves. And at any point when it, when asked which one will win, the answer is always the wolf that you feed. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you're feeling like, you know, all these like big picture kind of negative things about the hobby, stop feeding that wolf and just go back and what you enjoy yourself about collecting, get, get more, uh, you know, pull back retreat into your own kind of collecting goals and i think you'll be fine is that good advice like, or no are you like a philosophy major are you gonna start yeah. going going off the deep end i like it i like it well I, now that I, i'm a now that i'm a big shot movie producer <laughs> I've, I've gotten very uh yeah under better copyright copyright <laughs> don't mind that we'll be sued by deadpool but <laughs> All right, That's Troy, Disney. personal pickups. <laughs> oh, personal pickups, nothing. It's, I'm actually getting, I I think it really hit me yesterday that the expo is like t- less than two weeks away. So Thank I'm you. getting excited. I have very specific card goals. Like for the first time cards, I very much want to buy at the expo. So I'm nice. looking forward to that and kind of saving up my pennies for those cards too. Awesome. All right, well, that's our show for Monday. If you like the episode, please leave a rating and review on Apple, Spotify, whatever podcast app you listen to us on. If you love the show, got Troy and want to hear him gush all the time about Sidney Crosby mm-hmm. and want to support our efforts in doing so and chat with us every day on the Hockey Cards Gong Show Discord server, please consider a $5 doma- donation. Join <coughs> on a $199 support level tier on Patreon. You go to our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com, click on the Become a Patron link, go to Patreon's website directly, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, search for Hockey Cards Gong Show. If you want to read our show description, and there's a link there, whether you're listening to us on a podcast app or on YouTube. And then finally, we have a link in our Instagram and TikTok profiles. We are on social media. Follow the Gong Show on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, everything else. And Troy, the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a production of Dogbox Ventures, LLC. Check you out on Thursday.